Hello, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and I'm here with Riv, Andrew Velez, and Joe Dells. And this is now episode 214. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Dolphins' big win over the Bills, the coach shocking the Chiefs, Jalen Hurts leap if Lamar is the MVP thus far, second year quarterbacks if the Jags are legit, the Broncos issues, and more. Quick shout out to Boom Fantasy Mojo Chalkboard for sponsoring the Pick Aside podcast. Shout and out. also to let you guys know next week on Monday, we are going to be hosting a live stream on the What Not app. Huh? And we're going to be giving away trading cards Trey Lance, Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel. We're going to be doing giveaways on the What Not app, and we're going to be going live an hour before the Monday Night Football game, which is going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So come, guys, talk with us, chat, and hopefully maybe you can win one of those cards in a giveaway. I'm just saying they're graded. They're worth a lot. You might get lucky. So, yeah, come come over and chill with us there. Exciting week three of football. Very. Exciting, Very exciting week three of football. Monday shout night, that's Shout Niners out Rams. Matt Swanson. Yes. Rams. Big shout, shout out to the boy shout Matt Swanson. Shout out Matt Swanson. This is beautiful. Yeah, so Matt Swanson gave us each hoodies. He gave me a Harden hoodie, Drew a LeBron one, Joel a Tatum one, and Riv a Curry one. He's wearing it right now. Yeah, that one's insanely nice. And behind Joel's head, there is a Mojo football, Mojo branded football. Shout out to Mojo, the sports stock market. We're going to talk about them later on in the show. We're talking about the young rookie quarterbacks. But, Joel, we have some Boone Fantasy stuff, matchups for this upcoming week. We do. We have some... Just for boom, too. I mean, just for pick a side, too. We're going to be put these together for you guys. Um, I know we missed them last week, but we got to get boom back in action here. So this one, like you mentioned, all matchups. If you guys are new to the show, just whichever player is going to have more of this stat. We're also doing a giveaway for boom as well. Yep, End of the yep. month, we're going to be giving away a copy of NBA 2K. So if you want to be involved in that, use the link in our bio to sign up to pass 10 or more dollars. So let's get into it. First matchup, Sunday Night Football. We got Chiefs and Bucks. Who's going to have more passing yards, Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes? I just don't know how you could go Tom Brady over these last three weeks. He's just looked a shell of Tom Brady, but for fair reason. Doesn't have his guys at the wide receiver position. No Godwin. Mike Evans Mike Evans missed last week also. Just got to be Patty this week. For me, receiving core is just banged up for Brady, so I'm just going to take Mahomes. I have the same reasoning as you guys. I think Mahomes should easily go over Tom Brady in passing yards. Moving on, more passing touchdowns, Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson. Lamar currently has the most passing touchdowns in the league. It seems like it would be easy, Josh, but Lamar has been on one lately. I'll say this. Actually, I don't know. Oh, that's a fucking tough one. Lamar has been bugging. I think this is one of those games that's going to decide who takes the lead in the MVP race. And I'm going to go with Josh Allen. I think that we've seen the Ravens secondary can be a bit vulnerable. Mac Jones threw for 300 yards against them. He threw some boneheaded red zone interceptions. I don't think Josh Allen does that. So I think Josh Allen has more touchdowns. The entire time you guys were speaking, I was really trying to make up my mind. Me too. I really have no strong way. I'll say this. One or the other. The weather me. won't be as fucked up as it was last time. So I think Allen, he's going to bounce back. They they said he did get an x-ray on his, his hand, but he looks like he seems fine. I'm going to say Allen. I'm going to take Allen for this one. You know, I'm going to ride the high hand. I'm going Lamar. And last one. So these are both been same game, but we could also do cross game. So this one we got A.J. Brown and Justin Jefferson, two of the hottest receivers in the league right now. Jed has been struggling a bit lately. He's killing A.J. Me, Brown, man. week in and week He's out, has been. He's me mentally. Yeah, A.J. Brown's been killing it, though. Him and Jalen Hurts have a real connection. So who has more receiving yards, A.J. Brown or Justin Jefferson? I think receiving yards, it has to be Jettas. He has to bounce back last two weeks. Getting locked up by Jeff Okuda is nuts for a player of his caliber. I'm happy for Jeff, to be honest with you. I really am. I'm not happy for Jettas. It's been a tough journey for him. But I'm going to say receiving yards, Devonta Smith has picked it up lately, so he's been getting a lot of targets. I'm going to go Jettas. I think he needs to do it, so I'm going to go ahead. So looking at Justin Jefferson, week one, he had the big-time game. Week two... They were playing more man against them, and that's why he kind of got uh, neutralized. Week three, it was more like they were just double teaming him. The Lions were double teaming him a lot. Because of that, I feel like teams have – they're either going to play heavy man or they're going to play – heavy. they're going to always keep two eyes on Jettas. Because the Vikings, outside of Jettas, they don't have a true receiving threat that worries you. Adam Thielen doesn't at this point in his career. I think the Saints' defense, defensive secondary, they're legit. 
So I am going AJ Brown. I think he has the over. I'm just going to have to put my faith into Justin Jefferson because he's Justin Jefferson. Devonta Smith has been absolutely bugging out these last Some couple of crazy weeks. Catches on Wait, it's Devonta versus Justin Jefferson? No, no, AJ no. Brown. I'm, oh. just, I'm keeping that okay. in mind. I'm saying because Devonta has been yeah, getting involved Devonta a lot more. Devonta had more targets last week. So I think that Jetta needs a week like the one we saw week one. Not obviously the 180, the two touchdowns, but a definitely Justin Jefferson type performance, and I think he does that. Tough. Who'd you pick? Pick Jettis, I, I think, Jettis. right? You pick Jettis? Yeah, okay. Pick Jettis. It's, it's your favorite player against your favorite team. I went Mahomes, I went it's Lamar, and I went Jettis. Yeah, I went Mahomes, Allen, Jettis, my guys. It's tough. Uh, usually it's it's within the same game. Yeah, we could do both. Oh, wow. We I, do I both. didn't know oh, that. Man. Versatility. We got it all. It kind of confused me. I was like, wait, are, are the Vikings playing? Bro, the, I, I thought the same thing. The I was Eagles? like, look, we just played week two. Yeah, I was like, no, they're playing the same. We stomped them out already. And if you guys use our picks or whatever picks you guys use, send them over. Let's see if you guys want some money. This is one of the first times we've kind of swayed opinions. Yeah. yeah. We're recording a Patreon episode soon. We we said we we're going to do two a month, but the football season started. Things are kind of getting hectic. hectic. We're preparing for the NBA season as well. So we're only going to do one in September. We're going to try to do two next month. And if you guys are on a chalkboard, you get access to those Patreon episodes. I've kind of come to the realization that I was telling you this before the show that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are days that I have no free time whatsoever to do anything. Sunday, of course, is, fo- is watching football all day. Monday is watching the games. Tuesday is just taking notes and then doing the show. And I really want to play Apex Legends. After this show, I'm going to play some Apex Legends. You know, I actually had this conversation with my pops. I have no days. None. It's and it tough. sucks. It, it really suck. does. Yeah. Like today, obviously we're recording the show and I enjoy my time recording the show, but there was nothing more I wanted to do after leaving school than just going home and laying down. It's just been a grind. It really has been. Yeah. But I'm I'm happy because we had a vision. We're, we're, we're slowly but surely getting there. But this is the enjoyable part. And I appreciate that uh, our fans are appreciate our work that we put in. Definitely. Under Ooh. the comments, all I see is, you guys are dropping so consistently. Oh. It's consistent drops. I forgot to tell you guys. Um, I, <laughs> Hold on. Last time that happened. Last no. time oh, that God. happened. No, this is good news. This is good news. <laughs> I know it's a lot of hit by the ball. Um, oh, I, no, I might be um, like shadowing the, the Bergen Community College coach, head coach for basketball. Tough. So it's a, a uh, season. So, yeah. Nice, might be, bro. Might be shadowing the whole program and shit like that. Good Not for you, nothing King. crazy. That's fire, though. Yeah, yeah, I might be. So, uh, yeah. How'd you get in on that? I uh, spammed him. I went looking for him, and I asked, like, the security guards, you'll put me on. I asked the athletic director, and then I just found him. So, you know, we'll see Bro, how it goes. good stuff. That's big Got to be news. proactive, and that's what you were. Yeah, I found him. It took good me shit, a minute. Dude. I'll be at their tryout. I'll see how it goes. It'll be funny. So I'll, I'll Wait, you're going to try out. No, fuck no. No, no, no. I'm going to go watch no. them okay. try out. That's it. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, if, you, if you've been watching this show long enough, you know that Riv... He wants to be a coach. Coach Riv. Coach Riv. I'm on TikTok. 16. So it's the journey. It's the start of the journey right Still here. 24 years old, man. Yeah. Start of the journey. Being the oldest feels like a wonder, you know? You're barely older. You're not older than him. I am older than him. No, you're not. Okay. You are born in 98, right? Yes. Yeah. That was 97. When's your birthday? I don't it doesn't matter, bro. Yeah, I literally just... No, I just want to know it. I can't. It's in December. Ooh, it's December what? 11th. 9th. I'm sorry, bro. That was so rude. 9th. Wow, bro. You're a Scorpio? That's wow. my grandmother's birthday. No, Stach. Holy Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Oh, we talked about this at Blue 42. You got my grandma's birthday, my yeah. favorite ground. Okay. What do you guys think about Zodiac signs? I'm telling people I'm older than you. I lied this whole time. That's crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, Riv, you're Aquarius. I'm not. You're you're a Pisces. I'm not. You seem like you believe in that shit. I do because it helps me get to the woman. But I am also so not neither you're what you're Pisces. Tell you what, every man that tells me that they follow astrology, they say the same shit as Riv. Girls eat it up. Eat it up like yeah, crazy. Man. I'm an Aries, bro. You're an Aries. Yes. I fuck with Aries. I fuck with, and I fuck with Sagittarius. I and do your break is coming up. No, I mean, it's December also. So oh, what? Okay. Both of ours. Oh, so you're both December Sagittarius? 18th. Yeah, we are. I'm older than you. Yeah, you are. Yeah, young boy. Yeah. I can't say the word. <laughs> oh, yeah. <but> I, <laughs> Drew's young. I am No, young. he's young. Yeah, but he's actually young. Drew like was in our class and was always young. Oh, uh, right, yeah. You were like, you graduated 17, right? 16. 16. Graduate with us. No, 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 no. The age. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did graduate at 17. Ooh. Tough. Very. Yeah. It's a good age to graduate. It is actually incredible. You know? I was lit. I was at school. Somebody thought I was 18. Today? Yeah. Damn. 
You can't have a baby face. I actually though. do see some. You got the facial hair, hair though. This is the most I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. I see this shit coming in, boy. Stop. We need, most we need that seen. Avi to come in to fruition. Stop playing with the kid. I shaved it off actually. When I went to go get a cut, he Shave asked me, Are you want this off? And I said, Facts. Bro, when are you putting that Avi back? It's gone. That's a shame, man. I'm new Avi every year. Riv with you know milk what I'm is now. About? Yeah. Riv with what? Riv with milk is now the uh, new Avi. Go look at my Discord. It's me. Running into Is it your it. Twitter, Abby? No, no, no. Oh, Discord? That's all I care about. Oh. Twitter. I'll you know, change this one. You know which one I'm talking about, though, right? I, I, I thought you were talking about my Discord, The one with Abby. you with the beard, bro. Oh, I, the beard I thought I changed it. The I beard one's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I changed it. A new it. pick's going to have to come around that's more fire than this one to change it. Yeah, yeah. Let I, me see. This one? This one. Very, oh, okay. very heat. No, my Discord, it used to be that. I changed it to Riv with Milk. I just I'll... don't even know what that is. It's me with a plethora of carton of milk. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all it is. Just me all with right, milk. Fair enough. You know? Let's move on to the first topic of the show. I know. We were bullshitting. Like, we don't got like 12 topics. The so Miami nice. Dolphins beat the Bills 21 <clears throat> to 19. Now, some outlets have the Dolphins as the number one team in the power rankings. Others don't still. They are 3-0. and The only team that's 3-0 along with the Eagles. Now, what do you think about this win over the Bills, and what do you think is the reason for the Dolphins being a legit threat in the AFC? Well, well, well. Dolphins, 3-0. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Oh, wait. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I was nervous before Sunday. I was, because the Bills are no small challenge. They are a powerhouse, one of the best teams in the NFL. But I believed in the Miami Dolphins because they were at home, the Dolphins are new, they're revamped, and they have that one guy, Tua Tungavailoa. Now, when he went down, mm, it was worrying. It was worrying because it was scary Bro as was shit. He got up, he didn't know where he was, kind of just busted ass, fell again. It was ugly, and I was worried that he wasn't going to play anymore. People would seem genuinely concerned. It didn't look like he was going to come back into the game. For him to come back into the game to start the second half and to start the second half with a laser 25-yard throw kind of set the tone for the second half for the Miami Dolphins. Now, it's not just a credit to Tua because this defense situationally stepped up immensely when it needed to. The offensive line was fantastic. Let up five pressures, no sacks. I think, I'm sorry, when Tua was that quarterback, let up one sack to, to Teddy when he came in for that brief moment in time in the first half. Mike McDaniel is a genius. He's an amazing play caller. He genuinely is. But when Tua comes into the game in the second half to start, after going down, it kind of just brings a new energy to the team. Your quarterback goes down. It's just one of the worst gut punches there is. But when you see him fight through it and come back into, into the game, it just lights up the team like very few other instances. And he came in against one of the better defenses in the league, and he played... Very well. 72% completion percentage. What, not amazing statistical game. 180 yards and a touchdown, but he made great throw after great throw. He gets the ball in the fourth quarter to start it and puts a dot on third and 22nd to Jalen Waddle. He did an excellent job of breaking that film down on his Instagram. It was so perfectly true because there was a lot of great things that went to it. The offensive line held up. The weapons got open. The play design was great. And Tua dropped in an amazing ball. This team is one of the most well-rounded teams in the NFL. And that's one of the main reasons why it is where it is right now. 3-0 atop the AFC. Of course, I can sit here and I can I can try and praise Tua all I want. And for valid reason, he's been amazing. But this has been a collaborative team effort. Starts from the coach to a solid run game to a great offensive line that has been just night and day to last year. Two amazing weapons for for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Wild to be two of the, the top three in receiving yards so far this season. And for the defense to hold the Bills when they had an eight-minute drive to zero points in the fourth quarter. That's the game right there. As great as, as the offense was in, in managing the game in the in the second half, the defense stopping the Bills on that eight-minute drive won them the game. So the defense could be better than the Miami Dolphins for that matter because last week against the, the Ravens, it was atrocious. But this week, when it needed to be, it was huge. Do you have any concerns about the investigation into Miami? So, so that was interesting, too. But he was no, definitely concussed. He was, no doubt about it. But it's his back. 
He's been very vocal that his back has just been bothering him when it comes to to throwing, to turning, to doing any type of movements to the point where before practice today, he hadn't thrown a football. He was trying to be very mindful of it, and he only threw just right before practice had started. His, he might not – like, there's a, a chance For he sure. might not play on Thursday. A but short I week d- is, is But rough. I don't think it has to do with the concussion. I think that the spine really ultimately does have connections to everything – and it might have just been that his spine kind of just messed up his equilibrium and he kind of just forced him to fall to the ground. Um, but I'm not thinking anything of it about the the investigation because he's already not in concussion protocol. It has been identified that his back really was the issue. And and there is science to back that. Wow, so I, I didn't... I, I thought he was concussed. The way he was wobbly... No, he... His head also like slammed was, was, on the his, back. His, his yeah. equilibrium was definitely messed up, but it stemmed from the back hitting to then his head hitting, there was just a lot going on for him right there. Look, I think for me, the Miami Dolphins, what's making them so elite is their offense. That's really what it is. I think offensively, the firepower is amongst the best in the NFL. Amen. The play calling by Mike McDaniel, and the defense could be better, but they get the necessary stops when they need it. 100%. Waddle and Tyreek Hill are both top five in yards run per route, second and third in receiving yards this se- this season. And according to Football Outsiders, they have the 13th best pass-blocking offensive line, fifth in points per drive, second in offensive DVOA. So this has been an elite-level offense, one of the best in the NFL. Their defense, in totality, they let up a lot of yards, but I feel like that's kind of been a calling card for the Dolphins these past couple of seasons. They let up a lot of yards. Extremely true. And in certain situations, they just get crucial stops or a turnover here and there. Early in the Buffalo game, Javon Holland gets a strip sack on Josh Allen, which led to perfect field position for a touchdown that uh, Chase Edmonds ran in. Late in the Buffalo game, the Bills had two chances to score on their final two drives, and Miami stopped them both. But the question arises, like, how much of that is Miami just being good and the Bills shooting themselves in the foot? Because Allen missed a wide open flat to Singletary. That was bad. Wide open. You can't blame him. Uh, I thought him. you were talking about the pass to McKenzie, too, because that was a touchdown. Was this easy. game, Josh Allen had 71 dropbacks. That's the most by a quarterback in NFL history. Right now, he's experiencing Luka Doncic level usage rate in the NFL. Like, he's getting everything is running through Josh Allen. And then the last play of the game, Isaiah McKenzie failed to get out of bounds. He caught it in the middle of the field. He could have turned up I think he instead. Got at that moment. He could have turned up. Instead, he runs to the sideline, then turns up, doesn't get out of bounds, and the clock runs out. The Bills would have tried for a field goal there. Those are just mistakes by the Bills, in all honesty. And I think Miami, yes, they had a great game, but I do believe the Bills are still the better team. I I didn't come away from that game thinking the Dolphins are better than the Bills. I think the Bills are still better than the Dolphins. You look at this game, the Bills had 31 first downs to the Dolphins, 15, 90 total plays to 39, 497 yards to 212, 40 minutes time of possession to 19. The Dolphins had a season low, four explosive plays, and this was, the, this was only the 15th time in 157 games since 1950 that a team lost with at least 31 first downs while allowing no more than 15. And Miami ran 39 plays on offense and won only three times since 1940 has a team won while running fewer plays. This was kind of an anomaly performance, and I think we've seen this from the Dolphins two weeks in a row. They come back, miraculous comeback against the Ravens, and now they beat the Bills. I just feel like if those teams meet and the same situation happens all over again, the Dolphins don't win it at, at the end of the day. I think these are these are obviously great wins, but we have to take into account that the Bills dominated in every single facet of the game, and their injuries are real. Mitch Morris, Jordan Phillips, Ed Oliver, Trey White, Micah Hyde, he's out for the year, Jordan Poyer, they all got hurt. Dane Jackson wasn't playing a starting corner. Christian Benford in the game got hurt. Spencer Brown, Ryan Bates, Dawson Knox, they all got hurt. This is they're all their starters. And for it's like it's football. It's part of the game. For Buffalo to hold the Dolphins' offense in check for as much as they did while playing backup secondary players, not even backup secondary, backup backup, backup backup. to the backups, 
two of your best defensive linemen out of the game, I think the Bills, to me, are still the better team. And Xavier Rhodes is visiting the Bills. He actually is visiting them, and he was coached by Leslie Frazier. This would be some much added depth to their, to their team. The Dolphins, I think their offense is explosive, but there's still a concern with them because defensively, they're not able to generate pressure off a four-man front, so they have to blitz, and they blitz Josh out a lot, and they paid for it most of the time. And they allow a ton of yards. They're 31st in passing yards allowed in the NFL, 20th in rushing yards allowed. So this isn't as complete of a team as I'd like it to be. The offense is definitely humming right now, but it is week three. What's going to happen when teams start to figure out Tua's tendencies a little bit more, the offense's tendencies, we'll see how defenses adjust. But so far, the Dolphins are starting off well. It's year three. They, I mean, you would think that defenses kind of have some kind of clue to his tendency. New offense. Fair team. enough, fair enough. I want to give Miami their credit, though, because you could say, you know, Buffalo held them in check, but they just weren't on the field too much, right? You That's said they fact. had 20 minutes of time possession. It's easy to hold the team to 21 points when they don't have that many possessions. So Barely I, touched the ball. I fourth. need to give, you know, Buffalo, especially their ball control on offense, having such long drives, kept Miami's offense yeah. on the field. And we see that for some of the most... High offenses, you know, high explosive offenses. You want to keep them on the sidelines so they can't score as quickly. Buffalo did a great job at that, but at the end of the day, they're a great team. They didn't execute. They didn't get it done in the red zone. Josh Allen missed throws that we think he could get in his sleep, especially that touchdown to McKenzie at the end of the game. So it's a game looking at it like, yeah, Buffalo probably should have hit that throw and, you know, get off the field a little or um, get on the end yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, and end up winning that game, but they didn't. You have to give credit to Miami because this was a game, I think, I don't know if you said Miami or Buffalo. But I know us three all picked Buffalo to win. I picked Miami. You did. They beat Baltimore. They beat Buffalo. Are they anomaly type games? Sure, but you're taking two wins. You're three and zero going into Cincinnati now on a short week with to his injury. I am concerned about this upcoming week. But to talk just a bit, a little bit about uh, the question at hand, which what makes the Dolphins a legitimate threat in the AFC? I don't think I've ever seen an offense have so many wide open wide receivers. Right, and that's not just Mike McDaniel. That is the talent they have at wide receiver, the offensive line. Playing amazing and Tua just always hitting the open guy. I feel like every time Tua drops back, he's finding a guy that's wide open. And that's not discrediting him, saying he's throwing to wide open guys. Seeing he's the making field. the perfect yeah. read. Every single time, I think he only had 13 completions on Sunday. Yeah, 13, but 14. every single time, the guy was wide open and he was just putting the ball. And you got the run after the catch with two of the most explosive receivers in the league. We know the offense is real. He's leading the league in touchdowns, or not leading, but amongst the league leaders in touchdowns, yards, completion percentage. He's having a phenomenal year. My only hesitation about the Dolphins' offense right now is their run game because Chase Edmonds and Raheem Mostert both have 80 total yards of rushing. That is, that's concerning because especially in the AFC, when you get into November, December, January, the weather gets rough, the wind gets going, it's not as easy to pass, especially in Miami in that warm weather. You're going to have to be able to run the ball and have some sort of success. So that's where you know I do hesitate a little bit. Um, if they do have to go to a Baltimore, to a Cincinnati, to a Buffalo and play in that type of weather, that's my really only concern about the offense. But defensively, if you're holding Buffalo to less than 20 points, you're going to be winning a lot of games. If you could hold an offense like that to less than 20 points, you're going to be winning a lot of games. I know they had, Josh Allen had 400 yards, but he had 63 attempts. If he has 63 attempts, I'm expecting him to get 400 yards. So if you have this type of offense with Waddle Tyreek having those big plays, as long as you're good situationally on third down in the red zone, I like my chances because I have an offense that could score in a minute, in two minutes, or even less with the type of playmakers they have. It was really just that second quarter against the Ravens where they allowed 21 points. The eleven, the other 11 quarters of football, they've allowed 35 points. And this is to the Ravens, to the Bills. The Patriots don't have as explosive offense as these other guys. That's about three points per quarter. So you take away that second quarter against the Ravens, the worst one. The defense overall has played really well. So Miami, without a doubt, is a legitimate contender in the AFC. The only thing I want to see going forward, get the run game more involved, which I'm expecting with McDaniel's offense coming sure. from the Shanahan tree. To answer the question, I mean, I wouldn't say this makes them legitimate contenders, but this wakes people up even more. You know, you beat a team like the Bills, who we all considered were the best team in the league. That wakes it up. Now, of course, situation, you could talk about the Bills not having their secondary damn near to start the game. Guys were in and out of the lineup on the offensive line. Stephon Diggs in the fourth quarter kept going in, kept going out. They had a lot of things. It wasn't a good day for the Bills. The weather was messing them up. But still, like you said, 19 points holding the Bills, one of the best offenses in the league, holding them to 19 points, getting situational stops is good. I don't, I don't want to say – I still think the Bills are the better team because I do think in a regular situation, if they have their secondary, this looks like a different game. But 
credit Miami for getting that win, for going out there, getting key stops. Buffalo had the ball for damn near the whole game, and they still only had 19 points. Do I expect Allen to miss those plays again? I don't. Do I expect him to get a flag like that early in the game? I don't. I don't expect him to act out of character like that ever again, especially in a playoff he situation. He jaws, though. He, he does. He does, but I don't he expect him to, to push a, another player's yeah, yeah, helmet wild. off. I don't expect Allen to do that, especially in a game like that where I know he knows it's an important playoff game. playoff time, you're right. Yeah, so in playoff time, I don't expect. I expect that pass to McKenzie to be right on point. But to Miami's credit, Waddle making that play. Tua being as comfortable as he was making plays. The defense getting situational stops. You can see this team is slowly growing into a complete team. Jerome Baker was solid on the defensive end. So I think, like, legitimate contender, I don't know. That's tough. It's still week four. It's still too early to say. But they're definitely waking a lot of people up because this is a – well, they played the Ravens, who we considered a great defense. I'll say, who are the real con- – if Miami's not, who are the it real contenders? The, Buffalo? Before we walked in, it was the Bills really and the Chargers. Think- Right, I don't really think I'm yeah, ready. The to well, I said before we like when we walked I'm into saying the right season. Right now, today, I think it's the Bills. Like um, you could, if you want to say the Bills, sure. But Miami has to be in that top three no, in the AFC. They absolutely have to. They just beat the Ravens and the Bills. The only thing that's tough is they're in the same division with the Bills. So if they end up getting the wild card and have to go on the road the whole time, that makes See, things more it difficult. Was never crazy that the Dolphins could win the division. It's not. I think it was the way the way their offense looks right now. Now, who knows how it looks once the weather once we get into November, December, if they could keep up this high level of offense. But right now, outside of Buffalo, like Baltimore has been fantastic. Their defense hasn't been great, but, but Miami, like yeah, complete I don't, team. I'm not calling the Ravens a great defense. No, no, I, I still think what they did enough. was an anomaly against the Ravens. That was some wild. I do. Shit. Why are we? Call, you have to you put up 21 they points in the, the fourth. They did beat the Bills, but you got to look at the context of how they beat the Bills. Well, why, though? Who are you putting over Miami in the AFC? I would Buffalo, healthy, that's fine. I'll put a healthy Chargers team over them. Is They're that going to happen? Rashawn Slater's out for the season. Keenan Allen, hamstring So, injury right now, it'll age, probably just be the Bills, so. the Dolphins, and the Ravens. KC, I think the Dolphins are KC, top of course, three. Yeah, I think KC. it's the Chiefs, the Bills, and Dolphins in no order. The Ravens are right in there, though. I think if the Ravens figure it out defensively, defensively. they are top two for so me. They'll be for the sure. four, probably. But, but for me, it's, it's like... To answer the question and just, I guess, one answer, what's making the Dolphins contenders to me is Mike McDaniel. I think his offensive Coach system, of the year right now. what he's implemented is just been next level. Hey, 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 hey. Like the way... That, that's that's a 100% fact. Are you saying oh. what he said? Or? Yeah, Coach of the Year. No, no it's... It's, what, it's him and Suriani. Respect. For sure. Uh, pay, pay respect. I, would okay. take, I, would, yeah. I would be taking McDaniel right now just because he's a rookie. He's a rookie. Has been, yeah. Pay homage. The, the, way, the way McDaniel window dresses things on offense and... Like you said, two was throwing to wide open guys. I mean, that's a credit to the scheme and the, just the perfect play calls to to beat these type of coverages that these defenses are in. And it's no knock to Tua, like you said. You know, you, you does a great job it. of reading off defenders but as it's, well, though. It's all. It's also. It's also like just recognizing that this coach is making it insanely easy for this quarterback. That's good though, and as that's he a, that's a that's good job. Thing. That's what he's supposed to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. But w- when I look at Tua versus other quarterbacks that have to carry offenses, we will see. The real Tua, when teams start figuring this offense out, and they have to, he has to make something happen out of nothing. Which is what he did last that's, year. That's what will. That's when we'll see the real Tua when he's able to go above and beyond the offense. That's what makes a true franchise quarterback. And I don't want to make this a Tua topic every week, but we, you know, he's playing well, but we have to temper, we have to temper down the expectation a little bit. But why? But for this offense. Who is? I mean, obviously, sure. We want Justin Herbert or Allen. Yeah, Jared Goff was doing great in the Rams' offense. Okay, and he was looked as a franchise quarterback until he wasn't. But he was, you know, until like he got he proven had, wrong. He Baker Mayfield had an amazing year in twenty twenty. Now what Tua's been doing? Tua's, yeah. Tua's leading the pack at QBR. Once OBJ went out, Baker was pretty <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Yo, a very interesting thing: the throw that Tua actually got hurt on. That yeah. play was amazing. I I just like to think back to when I'm watching film, I just think about like all the criticisms you guys have had on him. And then this one sticks out with you because of yes. his inability to scramble out of the pocket or be mobile in the pocket. Mm-hmm. That play specifically was him evading a sack, getting away from another, yeah, throwing nice off ball. platform to go to yeah. your point, and putting a dot for There's the right first down. Model, he threw off platform like five yards, bro. It that was I not mean, five yards. It was. I it mean, he was like eight yards pass. behind the Facts. line of scrimmage, but probably went like five or six yards. But regardless, it's a it's great like a play. 14, 15 yard throw. It's a great play. Tua had a bunch of amazing the throws, and, and he only he had also, thirteen completions. He also 
through a pick six that was dropped. I'm glad you mentioned that. Josh Matt I really am. I really am. Josh because Milano, I actually man. was waiting that was for the it. one, bro. Um, you know, th- that one was super highlighted. That Matt yeah, Milano pick that, six. That was, that was the one. That was a gimme. So Allen had you know, a few though. People like sure. to they like to bring up the Allen pick six that Milano dropped, but Josh Allen had five interceptions dropped. He had a few, yeah. You know what? That's why we don't live with ifs and buts, because yeah, he should have had a pick six, but then the Dolphins also could have had two pick sixes. You know what I'm saying? Five dropped interceptions. No, Josh Allen had a Josh Allen two also had, threw the ball. Two had one bad times. ball. And that one was clutch, was, so. Oh, but so were these. Yeah. Josh we'll Allen well. also threw the ball 60-plus times. But yeah, that's, but that's his not offensive ideal. line was that's broken. That's 18 to 6. Like that's 18 not to 16 ideal. attempts. It's not ideal. I know it's not ideal. Well, mean, you got, can say it's not ideal, but the Bills have been playing like this. To be I fair, that was the game wasn't ideal. The, the team is running in and out new guys every other play. Like, this like, isn't going to happen again. The offense was... Pretty normal. The Bills are running everything. Stephon had Josh cramps. Allen. That was that been last year. Since last year. Yeah. What do you mean? But how long can this last? What? It can last. They can. They can win a Super Bowl like this. They can pass dropping back seventy one times. I don't think he'll need to do that. No, the end like of the year. this isn't going to happen every week. He's yeah, not up sixty three. It's a situation. Also, I just, just want to hit on the though 40, 50 times. I just want to hit on the weather point that you that you talked about. Buffalo had a tough time in Miami. The humidity definitely got to them. They are a cold team. It's the same way with Miami when they go up to Buffalo, up sure. north. Oh, it's when they get, play, yeah, when they they play Buffalo there. later in the year, they're going to feel that weather that's too. That's the See, weather. I won't, I, won't be, I won't be ignorant to that fact because anytime we've seen Tua in inclement weather, to be honest, he has not played his best. The week 18 against, excuse me, week 17 against the Titans in the rain was probably Tua's worst game where he actually should have played well. And it's so, going to be tougher because Tua's going to, be more likely to play in cold weather than hot weather towards the end of the year. Yeah, if he's so, not home. Correct. I mean, his his division is nothing but cold weather down the stretch. So, yeah, right. But for the sure, jo- Josh Allen did have a ton of picks dropped. The game should have been sealed, and they should have gotten opportunities because Josh Allen did have picks dropped. He has some dying. But, I will, but Gabriel Davis dropped the red zone touchdown, too. Gabriel Davis couldn't get fucking separation. See, uh, no, he he was open the one, a couple in the times. fourth. The one that, no, he wasn't. The one that kills me was that that last throw to Isaiah McKenzie. Obviously, awesome, it's just that throw was right there. He, he Josh he Allen hits that nine out of ten like, times. Stuttered. He like stepped forward and stuttered, then what? tried to throw it, and he didn't have the. I don't know. Honestly, for me, you get leeway when you threw the ball sixty plus. Fair. Times. But, yeah, but that's the game when he played. That's the game when he played. It was one hundred and fifty degrees. I'll be honest, Josh, was Allen, Josh Allen shit. doesn't get a pass from me on that. Complete, throw. complete other way around. He, we think he's the best quarterback. He played like shit. No, he played like shit in the fourth quarter. He played like shit in the fourth quarter. And he had the sixty attempts, and he had to meet the four hundred yards, and he shorts the throw. Because Josh Allen's going to say the same. Tua has sixty attempts. The game looks a lot different than Allen having sixty attempts. I mean, that's not true because Tua had fifty throws the week prior, and they won. That's true. You had, yeah, I mean, the fourth quarter. That's what I'm saying. He had 21. 50 throws. The game was all on to his arm, and he came through. So it's not like he hasn't shown it. He just did. I just, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see this. I don't see the Dolphins beating the Bills again. This was a team win. Yes. This was oh, a was. team win. In terms of Miami? Absolutely. No, yeah, for sure. I don't think you're saying anything. No. Right. That's okay. fair. Yeah, that's fair. Very I just, exciting I just, times in I, Miami. I do Very. Because you just, said I just, it perfectly last so do you week, think, it's 100% do you fact. Think that they can go up against anyone and should be thinking, we can win. So do you think the Dolphins are better than the Bills? Do I think they're better? I can't go into. I can't go that far. They didn't have all their guys, and it was a two-point game. You understand? Like I can't go that like, far. I, I feel like that goes. It's not, it's not crazy to say the Dolphins can win the division. I feel like more it, credit. It's never been crazy. Like, the Bills' defense, as, and the Miami offense wasn't on the field as much, but that's because the Bills really had to make long drives because their defense was fucking broken. I they didn't have anybody I, out there. Look, I, I think you're you're hitting you're right in a certain to in a certain <clears> extent <throat> because I think the Bills went on long drives because Miami couldn't get off the field. Like the no, offense was the, just moving. The Bills offense was great. Like the, the Bills great. offense, they went on these long drives because the Dolphins quite frankly couldn't stop them. And the Dolphins didn't have much time in possession because on their drives they punted the majority of the time. Half of the drives ended in punts. The the Dolphins just capitalized when they needed to capitalize. When they Big that plays. third and twenty two, when you need a play, they got to play, Backs. and those plays yep. were the difference in the game. But that's what you need. Your the guys. majority of the game, the Bills did dominate, but the Shout Dolphins made Russo. more he had a great game plays. yesterday. I mean, the other day. Yeah, he's him. a good player. Yes, but those, those big plays, like you said, those when you need your guys out there, and they didn't, you know, Micah Hyde. The Denver Broncos beat the 49ers 11 to 10. Now, I believe this is the only 11 to 10 final score in NFL history. No, second. Second. What was the yeah, first ever. One? It was uh couldn't tell you. It was a while ago though. 
That was yeah. a nasty game. They are it's now so two gross. and one. But the question is, Tied should first in division? Don't forget that. Should the Broncos? You kept feel saying you guys good? were un- outright first. Why no, you, I just said we're first. You just kept saying first. Yeah, you just kept. That's why. Yeah, you kept leaving the tie. That's yeah, yeah. why I was confused. I you kept leaving the tie out. No, I only I did mean, that what? because people were really talking. But crazy. I thought, yeah, so I thought you were just outright. That's was like, oh, okay, I didn't know. People, it. someone retweeted me saying, "At Andrew Five A's, give it a follow." Uh, they were retweeting my tweet of saying that the Broncos are going to win the AFC West, and it was a Chiefs account, and they were clowning me. So I just had to make sure once we were tied for first place that I let people know we we're in first place. He's just like, yeah, we're in first. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we're in first. But the question here is, should the Broncos feel good about this win? Is you know, it- you know why we should feel not good, but not bad. The Broncos we, are the new Lakers. We talk about them every week at this point. Well, it's because they're they're my squad, and yeah. you know the show. You've had the this, agenda. I the mean, this was a prime time game. There's they're my been, squad, and they're a big name team. L. They're they're in the media often. Too much for my liking, to be honest with you. That being said, You've underachieved. The reason to be happy is that the defense has been great, and that was a concern that Vic Fangio wasn't in town anymore. One of the better head coaches, defensive minded head coach, excuse me, and we were concerned of how we would react when. The talent on the line was a little all over the place. Secondary, we had confidence in. Linebackers had been poor. Josie comes back and has an all-world performance. You have Randy Randy Gregory and Bradley Chubb who are getting to the quarterback at a beautiful rate. It's honestly, Randy Gregory has come to this team and been <laughs> the second-best defensive player on our unit. And I say second because Pat Sertan is him. Top five corner in the league, him. Right now. Yes. He's, yeah. He has been unbelievable. I'm asking. Three weeks in and an entire rookie season where he showed the flashes was, of, yeah. of I'm just, no, I'm just, getting there. He didn't there, have him top five last but, year, so I'm just asking. No, he was not top five last year. So three year. weeks in, top five. The, the question is. He, he has taken a big jump. He has been other world. He's not great. Trayvon Diggs, though. Well, I'm, I'm just, he has, he's, he's played. Not. You're he's, really going to do that? Trayvon Diggs is better. He's, he's elite two right now. I'll tell you what. Trayvon has been great this season. You're right. You're right. He has better hands also, which is why. But it. I just think that. Sertan's not as big as Diggs, and he just is always interfering with the ball. He had six attempts his way. All six hit the floor this past Sunday night. But the reason why I can't feel all great about this, as much as I want to feel great because our defense has been amazing, they've been backpacking, Russ is is disappointing me to a degree. I can't lie. This offense has really been giving me a headache. This game was painful to watch. I was tweeting it. Is he allergic to the middle of the field? He is. Do you think so? I'm just asking you. I've read Riv some, knows the answer. I read some article. Like it. it just, you know, it, it opened my eyes. I'm actually about this the, season or last season, years his prior, entire career, his life. Listen, hey, listen, man, it was Small a great guy. article. I, I, I wish you would read it. I wish you I don't want. I want to be oblivious. You to should it. read it, bro. It's but great. The reason why <laughs> I can't feel great is because we can't. We haven't had a passing touchdown. More, we have only had one passing touchdown this entire season. Week one, we got into the red zone. Something to be proud about. One for one in the red zone. That was huge. But my God, Russ is holding on to the ball so long. The offensive line, it hasn't been great, I won't lie, but at the same time, it's not fully to blame. Russ is holding on to the ball way too long. He needs to trust himself. I was saying this to you a little bit earlier, and I think we spoke about it a little bit also. The receivers are not completely locked up. They're not. What it comes down to is Russ is trying to find the most wide open play, and he's thinking about it way too much. He's playing a little bit too tight. He's not slinging the rock like he normally does. He needs to play very loose, and he's not. And I can understand there's a lot of pressure, probably the most pressure he's ever been in because he took himself out of a situation with Seattle that was not ideal, and he wanted to call the shots for his own career. Now, do you – sorry to cut you up. I know you might ask it later, but do you think it is this pressure or do you think it's rather just Hackett's scheme? I think right now where we stand, I think that I look more so to him being tight. You think he's declining? Where where is this coming from? You know, I, I just I'm not finished. I think the I'm Broncos <laughs> should be excited finished. about their defense. I do. Oh, thanks. I no, I'm, I'm that. really just axing. Um, no, I mean saying Russell Wilson's declining at the age of 34 when he's just had two bad games because I'm not going to say he's three. 33 or 34. It's 34. 34. Wow. Okay. Is he? Yeah, he's he looks young. He looks young as hell. Rightfully looks so. Good. He looks really good. The <laughs> best Very Russell handsome. Wilson I've saw, <laughs> arguably this entire season was the last drive. Of, of the Sunday night game, where he was actually scrambling out of the pocket, extending plays. Improvising. The improv- improvisation that he had, that he threw that ball to Cage, no, to Kendall Hinton. Yes, yes. Where he's scrambling to his left, and 
Pete Carroll comes and says Pete, that, that Russ can't go left. The highlight of the game and the reason why we won was because of that play, his ability to scramble to the left, hit that throw on the run. That was a dot. We had a great drive, ended up getting to the end zone. Melvin Gordon capped it off, even though Melvin Gordon needs to be on the pine. He fumbled the ball well too many times, and Javante is getting opportunities squandered from him because we constantly are trying to give the ball to Melvin. This offense needs to be better. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to overanalyze it. I understand that it's been bad, but I believe that with time, Russ will get acquainted and very well in tune with his guys, and we will be fine. The 7-5 and five Buccaneers were one of those teams that it took them a while to cook up. They were 7-5 and five when Brady first got there. I don't think that team Arians, is more talented. Arians' offense is more complicated the than more the talented. one that Hackett has it right now, no close. doubt. More talented, too. Of course. And Brady. Godwin, Godwin yes. and Evans is definitely better than what we have. But it took, them, it took them 12 <laughs> to 13 games to really figure it out. After the bye. It's been three games. We've looked horrible. I'm not going to come out here and just be in full panic. You know, Do you like, not value the opponents that you've played, though? Like, outside of the Niners? San Fran, who everyone outside, here... Outside of the Niners. Everyone here except my boy, Joel Dells, this, thought that the Niners would win. And I then NBC, the Niners would win. no one had... The Broncos winning other than Matthew Barry. Yeah. You, 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 you pulled out an ugly one and you got to get those. You, you, get, you know, like, those. I understand it. Was, I'd pick the Niners and stuff, but we all did. ultimately, you did? Broncos, I'll just you did? real quick start off with the Niners because this is just a sentence. Jimmy Garoppolo proved why they wanted to why they wanted to Thank switch you. him at quarterback. He looks so That's bad. That's really why. I'm not so saying that Trey Lance is any better because he didn't remember, show much remember, either. Remember at the beginning of the season, you said, if Trey Lance played like Justin Fields played, they would have got Jimmy G. Love ago. I didn't know Justin Fields was going to look like this <laughs> right and now. Yeah, word. Well, but all, anyhow, all, I'm, on, all I'm saying is that there's a reason why the oh. Fortnite has moved on from Jimmy G. I thought there he was is. on the Jimmy G to the, to the Jimmy NFC. G. No, I think you can, you can still go there. I mean, uh, you know, just giving Jimmy Garoppolo some leeway. The garbage. They did not give Jimmy G. They did not give give Jimmy G a playbook until when he got. Brother's been the system for three years. I understand, but years. there's definitely tweaks to the offense. Yeah, but come on. So I understand there's some rust there. He just got off his shoulder. He just had yeah. shoulder you surgery. Rust, fine. But he looked there's great against there. Seattle. He looked like it, that man. He didn't look great. He managed. He looked. The game. He looked a lot better than did against he, Denver. Yeah, You're I mean, right. He didn't look great. A, he looked like Jimmy G. Seattle is one of the worst defenses in the league. Denver's Broncos an elite defense. a good, yeah. really good defense. This is what I'll say about Denver, and I am, I'm not going to overanalyze it. I'm going to analyze it That's just strictly. Should you feel good about this win? No. And the defense, yeah, they came to play. I think they've been playing well. Been playing Although great. their first three quarterbacks have been Geno Smith, Davis Mills, and Jimmy Garoppolo. They've been playing well. I think they'll still, they'll be a good defense for the entire, there's no he doubt. doesn't want to give you a credit. No, no, no. All. Listen, I, even still, he's not wrong there. We haven't played great talent. Hey, well, it's as know. simple as this. I mean, Debo. What I know. saw Sunday night was one of the worst offensive performances ever. It's bad. On both parts. Yes. On both parts, yeah. but more on the Broncos, to be what? honest. Outside the of the Niners one were garbage, drive. too. What are you bad. talking the, about? The, the Niners, at least the Niners were able to what? get a Dude, couple what? first what down. What did they oh my do? God. No, they barely. They were, they were both terrible. We had 10 honest. punts. They had seven. So it's not like they were really any equally bad off. The Broncos have scored three touchdowns in three games. And you want to know what my That's biggest cool. takeaway was from the 49ers Broncos game? It turns out that Russell Westbrook isn't the only Russell that's washed. Wow. Russell Wilson is washed too. Oh my God. He took it to Westbrook. That's fine. That's tough. No, that's fine. That's Westbrook's fine. Through washed. three games, Russell Wilson is averaging 247 yards per game. He has two total touchdowns to one interception, 58% completion percentage, 81 passer rating. This is the worst start. He's ever had in his career. The Broncos had nine three and outs against the Niners, the most in Russell Wilson's career. This is the truth about Russ. He can't scramble like he used to. He, visibly, he's lost his step. I think that's very apparent. Is it? I think it is. It didn't seem apparent to me. On the last drive, the last maybe. Drive. Well, that's but the only the he, only drive that he actually scrambled. This year on plays outside the pocket, Russell Wilson is 4 for 14, 57 yards, no touchdown. He has four sacks. He doesn't pass in the middle of the field. That's been him his entire career. He had a couple and throws over in the middle of the He holds on to the ball, which that's leads to sacks, and it limits the offense. That's true. With Russell Wilson, you can only play one way. And that's why no matter the offensive coordinator, all of them – have not been able to implement their scheme or system because Russ is unable to adapt. Nathaniel Hackett's offensive scheme is predicated on quick passes, getting the ball out quick, making quick reads, 
and that's never been Russell Wilson's game. Only 16% of his dropbacks this year have resulted in him being outside the pocket, a career low. And look at Geno Smith versus Russell Wilson this season. Smith has a higher completion rate, passer rating, EPA per pass play, EPA per attempt, third down conversion rate, sack rate, red zone efficiency. Who the fuck cares? This is a guy that the Broncos just gave a $245 million contract. That's a lot. And he's 34 years old. Russell Wilson has never been a pure pocket passer. And with his diminishing athleticism, coupled with the scheme that doesn't fit him, I don't see how Russell Wilson gets much better than where he is right now. I just need to know what facts you have that show you he's a diminishing athlete. It's just watching the game. You can t- He's no, lost his But that's step. the thing. I'm watching the game, and I, I actually have no idea where this is coming from. Russell Wilson, can you, t- off the top of your head, how many designed runs have they caught for Russell Wilson this year? Zero. It's one. Just one. They're he not does. using his athleticism. It's due to two things. They want to keep one, him healthy. That's one of them. The tool is that he's not the same athlete. You know, Russell Wilson, come, when he was younger, was a lot like Kyler Murray, where scramble outside of pocket, make something happen. And Kyler Murray is more athletic than Russell, yes. even at Russell's best. Yeah. Russell doesn't have that. There are times when Russell tries to evade pressure, and he get he's caught up with. Defensive linemen are catching up to him more often. That's what I'm referring to. He and just haven't remember, seen that. Remember, remember in the offseason when I told you while the Broncos offensive line might be slightly more talented, it's not going to do much for Wilson because he holds on to the ball. The truth about quarterbacks is that sack rates tend to follow quarterbacks throughout their career. If a quarterback takes a lot of sacks, it tends to follow them because the offensive line plays a factor. But there's a reason why Tom Brady has one of the lowest sack rates. It's because he gets the ball out quickly and he throws the ball away. Russell Wilson waits for things to develop. He holds on to the ball. So even with a better offensive line, it just it, he holds on to the ball longer and the sacks are going to be there. So even going from one offensive line to another offensive line, the sack numbers are still going to be there. And he's doing one of the poorest jobs in protecting himself from sacks. But that is that result is a bunch of factors. It's him holding on to the ball. It's him not being able to get out of it quick enough, which he used to be able to do. There's a reason why they, they're not rolling him out as often. And in Hackett's offense, like I mentioned, it's Shanahanian scheme with Rodgers. You saw the quick game, quick passing game versus the Bucks. We saw the Packers have two main drives where Rodgers just getting the ball out quick. That's never been Russell Wilson. That's not how he plays. He's more of a guy who thrives in a vertical scheme, and that's not Nathaniel Hackett's offense. So the only fix for this is if Hackett scraps up the offense to fit Russ, which in Seattle proved that once they did that, they got diminishing results, or keep hope hope that Russ can adapt to this scheme, which I doubt. You know, he doesn't... You Russ, started this off saying you're not going to overanalyze. Russell, and you're doing a not, lot of overanalyzing. Uh, Russell you're, you're Wilson, you compared him to Gino. Smith, no, bro. I didn't. I'm just no, I didn't. You I just said Gino Smith has X, Y, and Z better than Russell. No, no, I like, just you're said, doing that to prove on, that bro. Russell isn't who who. I did that to prove that like you could cherry pick names. I'm sure a lot of guys that Gino has better numbers than. I did that to prove that Gino Smith, who is looked at as a far worse quarterback, is playing very good football in Seattle. I'm not comparing him to Russell. I know Russell better than Gino. I know Russell. Burrow. I know Russell Wilson's a better quarterback. Okay, so he's like, not playing better than Burrow in the last two weeks. It was just that one week by Burrow. Let's let's ease down. Burrow was good against Russell, Dallas. Russell, yes, he was. And it's, did you watch the second half? Oh my! God. Did you watch the second half? Burrow was not good. What are we against talking Dallas? about? They seventeen points. Twenty-one to seventeen was the final, I believe. They got going in the second half. They hit, kicked the field goal. Russell Wilson not throwing to the middle of the field is not something new. It's like what he's been his entire career. It like. And if you want, like Riv read the article on it, you can read it too. It's what he's been. This is this and is not been new. A, he's been, been, he's, he's been he's been he's been a career. And it's not even <laughs> that they don't call plays that way because there are some times where Hackett has these reads into the middle of the field. He just doesn't. And do Russell it. Wilson just doesn't pull the trigger. Now, is that because he can't see over the offensive lineman? He just doesn't trust what he's seeing. It could be a combination, but he just doesn't pull the trigger. He's shown an inability to do that. And I just don't see at this point in his career, being 34, he adapts. And on top of that, he's a quarterback who thrives on a deep passing game. And 34 is not that old, dude. 
Not for quarterbacks. For pure pocket quarterbacks, yes. Tom Brady's 45. But he's a pure pocket quarterback. Rodgers is a pure pocket quarterback. I'm sorry. I got you. You're saying the way the way NFL defenses are trending, it's a lot of too high cover two stuff, which means that defenses are forcing you to go underneath on a lot of stuff. That limits Russell's game because Russell is a is a guy who waits for progressions to happen, and he's a like I said, he's a vertical quarterback. So that could also be leading to his diminishing play. Is that the way defenses are playing him? He didn't see that early in his career. Stop using diminishing, yeah. man. I'm not ready to go that far. I think Russ. Listen, bro. He's one of the best quarterbacks this generation. I'm putting my faith in Russ and this offense being able to figure it out at some point. Now, will it be AFC Championship like you had at the beginning of the season? Maybe not. But I'm not ready to sit here and say, Russ is taking this decline. He's diminishing. He's not the same guy. Last year, he was good. And I know coming over to Denver, you got to think, this is all completely new for him. He has been in Seattle his entire career. This is the first time he has ever changed team, changed cities. He's had new teammates, but now these are all new 10 other guys on the offense with him that are all brand new. So just like we gave Brady plenty of time, and yes, it was more talented. It was Tom Brady. It was with the proven head coach, with the better offensive line. All of that, I understand. But if Brady took 13 weeks, I'm not ready to say Russ is completely washed and done. To your point, the defense has been great. And that was a question mark coming in. It was a legitimate concern because Fangio left. The fact that the defense is playing the way it is, given against lesser opponents, you have to be encouraged as a Broncos fan. The big question is, can this offense figure it out? And if you have Russell Wilson at quarterback, you should still feel pretty good about him figuring it out. Is he going to be an MVP contention? Probably not, but you still have two great running backs. Javante should be the number one, but Melvin Gordon's getting work has been efficient at times. Get him and you do there. have outside weapons with Judy and Sutton. And I understand that he doesn't see the over the middle of the field that well. If he hasn't done his whole career, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a guy that's won a Super Bowl. So although he hasn't been able to do it his whole career, he has proven that's a limitation, but he's able to surpass that. He's able to get over it because he has been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL this past decade. Just two years ago, he threw for 40 touchdowns and seven interceptions. I know the defenses are changing with more cover too, taking the big play away from them. But the Broncos are going to be able to have to adjust too. If Hackett is going to be this long-term solution, or at least with Russ there, he's going to have to be able to change things up. It's only three weeks. It's a small sample size. Feel good about the defense. Hope the offense figures it out. You have the Raiders next week. I believe the Colts after that. And I think the Chargers the next week. So these next three weeks against opponents who are good, but outside the Chargers, these next two, they're not powerhouses. The Raiders are going to be desperate to get a win, but that's a game you could go in and win. If you beat the Raiders on the road, you should feel really good. And then with the Colts coming in who have looked really shaky, they beat the Chiefs. We're going to get into that a bit later. And the Chargers going to be a true test. But I'm not ready three weeks in to say Rush is diminishing. He's taking decline. I do think athletically he is not what he once was, He's but I also think that he has gotten better as a He's passer. Half of that. He Wait, has what? gotten smaller. That was, that was He's better. It's my okay. eyes. I don't know what to tell you. I shoot you a quick question. Uh, two questions for you, both of you young men here. Do um, you guys think Russell Wilson holding the ball is more him or his receivers not getting open in time? Yeah. It's him. It's, it's him. It's him. The guys are getting open. Sutton is getting separation. And then my number two question so is: we, We've all admitted, like we we all believe the defense has been great, but we. Just, can we overhype the defense and then not feel the same way about the offense struggling against the same type of opponents? Because we can say, like you said, the defense has been great, but the opponents, the first three, hasn't been, you know, powerhouse offenses or that great offenses. So can we speak on how the offense hasn't been great for Denver and they haven't That's played fair. outside the Niners powerhouse defenses? Well, I'll say this. The Niners offense usually is good. We it's made, good. It's, it's We made Jimmy yeah. G look like shit. Jimmy Look G bad. is not good Terrible. in general. However, we made him look worse than he 100%. usually does. The offensive line is also injured. And that's not hard to do. But even still, even before Trent got hurt, yeah. we still were, we no, still yeah, were yeah. dominant. Yeah. You did just You're think. 100% right. The staple it was of different. the Niners is the Absolutely. run game. And if you Absolutely. stop that, Jimmy G becomes... Three, no, you did your thing against the Half of what he you is. did your thing. You, who would have thought that a safety would be a beneficial play when yeah. it could have resulted in a pick six? Th- this is what I'll say. And, you know... If you guys want to, I understand your perspective of like, you know, it's Russell. He'll figure it out. He's an all-time great quarterback. I understand that. I think some key differences between him and Brady. There's a lot of differences. Well, there's a bunch. Especially in the situations is that, like you said, is Brady. Tom Brady is the the greatest of all times. The offensive line was a top three unit in football. Bruce Arians is a proven head coach. Mike Evans was him. The weapons are better. The defense was one of the best in the league. So um, but it's also just really Tom Brady and how much better sure. he is than Russell Wilson. Yeah, He's a pure pocket quarterback. That's not what Russell is. 
when you're a pocket quarterback, you can last longer. And when you're a taller quarterback, quite frankly, yep. you know, we saw even Drew Brees towards the end of his career, and he's not the mobile, he's not as mobile as Russell. He was late 30s. But Drew Brees. Drew Brees played till he was 42. Drew Brees, the last Nasty three. Beast. He was like five foot 11. Drew Brees, the last oh, three years of his career. I know. Although the stats looked good, you can visibly tell. Eh, the arm was gone. It, the arm you, was definitely he was gone. cooked. Yeah. You, he's not the same guy. Cooked and product. Russell Wilson, a big part of what makes him him is his athleticism. And to me, Drew can tell me all, all he wants. Oh, I don't see it, but I do. I see he's not the same athlete. He's one spin. I know. He is getting chased down by defensive linemen. And if you want to just say, okay, I'm putting my faith in Russell. He'll figure it out. Me, I'm going more so on the schematics of the offense and how this offense doesn't fit Russell. And that's why I am very worried about the offense going forward. You know, and But the thing that just I have, tr- I have difficulty sitting with is that you don't believe in Russell's ability to adapt. He hasn't. But why can't he being in a new situation? He's... I'll use this example. Last year, Shane Waldron came into Seattle from the Rams because the Seahawks wanted to implement more Sean McVay's S style offensive schemes. Shane Waldron comes from that tree. He could not run certain concepts with Russell Wilson because Russell Wilson would just see him and he wouldn't throw them. These stick concepts, quick passes, Russell just wouldn't throw them. So Shane Waldron, as the season progressed, had to adapt the offense to Russ and just run a more vertical scheme, which means it's not Waldron's offense anymore. It's now what Russell wants to do. That's why Russell, in the beginning of the season, he struggled because it was a new offense. He had to adapt. When he came back from injury, they they curated the offense entirely to what he likes, and he started being better. I don't think Russell will thrive under the system and adapt. Will Nathaniel Hackett ultimately have to say, you know what? Russell just doesn't throw this shit. So scrap this. Figure We're just throwing concepts that Russell likes. Which yes. Is what they should do. But that is that so incorrect? No, it's not, not at all. incorrect, but it's, it, I would say it's, it's correct. Limit, it limits your offense. It, it limits your offense ultimately. But if they're having success, does it matter? Because this is the way to beat Russ. And you mentioned this earlier about like how Pete Carroll said he couldn't go to his left. Pete Carroll didn't say he couldn't go to his left. He's statistically inefficient going to his left. Play if the you, games, him going left. If you're facing elite level teams and, and teams, they already know how to scheme for Russ, and you're containing him within the pocket, and he's forced to win, win from there, it's going to be an ugly game like we saw yesterday. And that's what happened in the Rams playoff game where he played poorly, just schemed up for him. When a quarterback does not see the middle of the field, it's easier to scheme up for him. Kyler Murray in the past playoffs, we saw what the Rams did to him. So that limits your offense. Ultimately, I think if the Broncos want to have more ultimate success, Russ has to be able to adapt. I'm but to this point in his career, he has not shown the ability to do that. So that's why I'm hesitant on saying that he'll just fix things. I, while I do agree athletically he has lost a step, I do not see the arm taking a step back like the comparison to Drew Brees. No, no. I, I think his arm's there. Okay, the arm is still there. Athletically, sure, has he taken a step back, but he still is an above-average athlete. He's not someone who can't move at all. He's not a Kyler Murray, even what he once was, but I think he's athletic enough to be able to make those plays out of the pocket. I know so far he hasn't been efficient, but let's be honest, so far he hasn't been efficient doing anything. So, you know, it's going to <laughs> take some time. I do think over time, I'm hoping at least him and Hackett's relationship gets to a point where he could say, hey, Hackett, let's implement this and this. Let's call this play instead of that so we could get some get some yards, get some momentum going where Russ could feel comfortable in this offense because – you guys, it's hard to really get something going where you don't start hot when you have these drives that stall, when you go three and out, when you have turnovers. So I'm hoping, I don't know when it's going to be. It's hard. It's a shot in the dark at this point when things are going to get figured out. But I still think there's too much talent on this offense for it to look like this for the rest of the year. An underrated part of the season so far is that Russ did not play in the preseason. He was one of those guys that did not play in the preseason, wanted to wait till the, the season over to make his debut. Did they do that last year, do you know? The Broncos or no, Russ. just Russ? I'm not sure. Because there's also teams that didn't sit. And my good. my reason why I bring that up good. is because you're in a new system. You're in a new team. You want to be or you want any type of field experience. To not go out there and get no play time at all 
and now we're we're struggling early in the season, it should not be a huge surprise. And right now, I I really am not. I think you can say that for week one, maybe a quarter to into week two, but it's three games in against the Seahawks, who are the one of the worst defenses in the NFL. But we played off, we played well offensively, couldn't execute in the red zone. Against the Texans, we can highlight that. Yes, you're 100%. They're right. a bad defense. Offense looked like shit against a bad defense. Yes. Against the Niners. No, they're great. Elite re- defense. Um, elite defense looked terrible, still pulled it out. So, two of the three, we've been ass, but week one, we look good. We couldn't execute. Our scheme, correct. We, we, our execution in the red zone was poor, but we played extremely well. The scheme, it, it looked like Russ seemed comfortable. He was hitting his shots, he, he had the deep ball, he was hitting the out routes. Middle of the field, yes, and I can't really Week one was a lot more hacky than many. anything. You know, coming into the season, my concerns for the Broncos were the coaching and uh, the defense. The defense has proven me wrong. But now my focus has shifted to Russ. I think he's at, that's a concern. And Nathaniel Hackett, I didn't speak about him at all because I think it's pretty apparent he's a problem too. He just hired an advisor, and that advisor talked him out of going Talk them out of going for it on fourth and inches on his side of the field, which if they didn't get it would have been disastrous. But Nathaniel Hackett too is also somebody I, I, I'm not a believer in either. So, uh, but people people praise especially Staley last year for being so aggressive on fourth down. If it's fourth and inches, I don't know the exact situation off the top of my head, but I don't really have problem with aggression in the right situation. If you have a guy like Russ and this talented offense to go for it, I'd rather be aggressive and in lose a game, than be conservative. In a game like lose. that, though, versus Forty Niners, in he a low scoring Listen, game, he got huge scrutiny for not going for it. Already in a low-scoring game, though. I, yeah, but I that, do that's spend. what I think is the problem: is that Nathaniel Hackett, because of every all the chatter around his decisions, he's overthinking his decisions, and he's not standing firm on what he ultimately called, which I think that's a concern because now it influences your future decisions, and you don't have an identity. You know, like I think Nathaniel, I think the Broncos right now lack an identity, and that identity is brought in by your head coach, and I think that's the biggest problem, but. There's also these other problems underlying with the Broncos, with Russ and the scheme and, and shit like that. That it's concerning going forward. But two and one, you know, you're you're. You'll take it. I guess why it doesn't why, more wins and why I'm happy is you said it perfectly. Your main concern was defense. Now suddenly our offense is not what everyone was expecting. So you're immediately going to shift to to Russ. Now imagine that. Now we're going to have to put all the our. We're going to have to try and scrutinize Russ, and this is going to be the part of the team that we're going to try and, and say is the reason the Broncos won't be great. Well, right now, that's the no, biggest concern. No doubt about it. It's the Achilles heel of the team right now. A hundred percent. But why I'm confident and I'm so okay with that, because it's yeah, Russell I'm listen, I'm Wilson. With you. I'm with you. That's why I feel so comfortable and great. I'm with you. Your main concern preseason is our safest bet right now. And he hasn't won a playoff game in five years. Okay, that's fine with me. That's fine. <laughs> Like, you, like you can just throw that subtle he, thing he that has, means nothing to but me. He, like he hasn't had back. real legitimate playoff success in the last five years, Listen, and that win well, came against the Eagles. If they get that to needs. the playoffs, that tells me they figured it out on offense. So we could cross that bridge in January if they five get to the playoffs. Because the way their offense is playing now, yeah, we're I don't know if offense. The, if last the playoffs time, are in the in the scheme. Not, the, the last time, yeah, when you guys had Josh McCown on it because he was a teacher the year before that. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, it is something to be concerned about, but. You know, maybe they figured okay, it out. Listen, I'm, I'm old enough mm-hmm. to remember so Denver make, in. when you doubted another elite I think option. Now that Miami has started out like this, and I, I believe in Miami more than Denver. I do too. I think the Broncos missed the playoffs. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who's making it over us? He said Miami. Miami. Oh, just Miami? <laughs> yeah. That's a tough I'm one. Trying to think. Who else? I have, you think I the Bengals still get in? I had Indy, but I'm slightly swaying over to the Jags now. You have the Bengals still getting in? Bengals, yeah. Baltimore? Yeah. I have the Bengals in a ball. And then three, or I guess just two teams in the AFC West. Every show you're going to do this? Yes. The Chiefs, I still have the, I'm, I like the Chargers still. The Chiefs, Chargers, Chargers Jags, are done. Dolphins. Chargers got a bad loss. Um, <laughs> it was a bit, <laughs> oh my God. God. It was a bad loss. It was a Slater, bad right? loss. And Slater, not, I'm saying about just the, the yes. game, but no, Slater's a huge loss Out too. for the year. That's, that's brutal. He's one of the best tackles in the game. And then Bosa had a groin injury. Is he going to be all right? They're Keenan fucked. should be back week four. In a couple fucked. weeks. But yeah, Eckler looks kind of washed. I mean, he hasn't been able to get anything going. They are fucked. Yeah. And Mike Williams is like, not really one. He's a good two, but solid two, I'd say. 
So Mojo, as you guys may know by now, if you've been listening to the podcast, is a sports stock market where you can invest into players. Currently, they only have NFL, and you can only invest in New Jersey, but you can download the app worldwide. Now, rookie quarterbacks or second-year quarterbacks now, they played in Week 2, Justin Fields and Davis Mills. We're going to talk about that game a little bit. And then talk about Zach Wilson because he's making his return soon. So right now, Justin Fields is at $25. Davis Mills is at $19. And Zach Wilson is at $32. First off, let's just talk about Fields and Mills because they faced off um, this past week in Week 3. Battle of the Mid. And the Bears beat the Texans 23-20. to Now, I tweeted this, and I, I stand firm on this. The Bears are 2-1. It's the worst 2-1 ever. But it's... A discouraging two and one for sure, because Justin Fields has not been good. If I was a Bears fan, I'd rather be zero and three, mm-hmm. and Justin Fields play lights out or at least above average level. Right now, Justin Fields has not completed more than eight passes in any game. Fifty-one percent completion percentage, two hundred ninety-seven total yards and passing, two touchdowns. Four interceptions, 99 yards per game. Right now, he is averaging 33 yards less than Walter Payton averaged in 1977. Goddamn. Just a little fun fact. So, Justin Fields has not been that good against Houston. Two interceptions, two fumbles, 27 passer rating, lowest of his career. And he has completed 23 passes through three games this season. That's the fewest by a quarterback to start the first three games of a season. Since 2000, the only three quarterbacks better were David Carr, Vince Young, and J.P. Lawsman. Well, the three quarterbacks right ahead of him yeah. were those guys. Are we going to mention the offensive line? It's been okay. It's been okay. I'm worried about Fields. I'm I'm concerned. I tweeted it. The situation is bad. He's, He's playing bad. worse. He has made the situation <laughs> worse. If Justin Fields was having these flashes, showing his big playability, showing off his athleticism and his arm talent, I would get it. Like you said, I'd rather be 0-3 and and see Fields make this progress, but I have to be consistent. I've said, if you're a quarterback, an NFL quarterback, you just got drafted first, second round, whatever, as long as you're starting, you have to show me something pretty soon because damn near all these quarterbacks that are coming in show stuff early on in their career. And his first year, I gave him a pass just because the situation wasn't great. I thought the coaching was really bad. The offensive line was bad. And coming into the second year, we knew it was the worst situation in football, but the way he's playing was it, it's exceeding what I thought it could be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's worsely exceeding my expectations. He has been really bad so far. And this is coming from me, who I thought Fields could be the answer for the Bears at quarterback. That's why in the offseason, I said I was kind of at this you know crossroad like, Fields is going to play, I thought he was going to play good or okay, but they're going to be bad enough to get a top five pick. Now I think they're just going to have a top five pick, period. I know they have two wins, and I'm sure Bears fans are going to be going crazy in our comments because they always go crazy defending another team, even though I really do think they're one of the worst teams through these first three weeks. If they continue like this, if Fields continues to play like this, there's no way in hell you could go into 2023 with him as your starting quarterback. Maybe you keep him on the roster and you draft someone and, and they little battle it out. But at that point, if you're picking the top five, you probably just want one guy. No controversy. Let him be the guy. I don't want to put this on field so early, just three weeks into the season. But I have to be consistent because all of these quarterbacks have shown us something pretty early on in their career. We're going on 10, 15 career starts for Justin Fields. This, These three games, I'll throw out week one because the monsoon. But these two games... This isn't 2022 NFL football. This is 1970s, 60s football where the quarterback isn't the star of the team. It's the running back. And Montgomery said some moments. Khalil Herbert looked really good. But I'm definitely worried about Justin Fields. I think it's a combination of... It's close. That's close. Because Monty had a great game week two. He did. He was but Herbert was all world week three also. This is... Before you go, Riv, this is like why... <laughs> and I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ken. You're good. This is why the Bears coming into the season, yes, we projected them to have the worst situation. But watching them right now, Matt Eberflus is a good coach, and he has these guys coached up well. The Bears to this point, 11th in DVOA. So their defense, they're getting stops, they're giving the offense possessions. The offensive line has been solid. You look at sack rates, and there's a, there's charts that you know dictate how many pass-blocking sacks that uh, the offensive line saves versus how many the quarterback generates. Fields is dead last. Like, Fields is responsible for his sacks because he holds on to the ball for so long. 
On top of that, he's inaccurate. And I just had a question about that because I actually was looking that up. So he has the fewest amount of dropbacks. Mm-hmm. He has, I think it's 58. Because I saw you tweeted about this, and I was I was genuinely confused. I'm glad you brought it up. So you're 100% right. Yes, he holds on the ball for way too long. The offensive line, the way that the chart's set up, he, 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 the offensive line, I guess, now that I'm rereading, is not to blame. Explain that to me. Because wouldn't you think that him not dropping back, it would seem as if he does not have enough time? The, the reason why he doesn't drop back is, in my opinion, yeah, because the coaching staff does not trust him. I agree. He makes plays in a game that could cost you the game. Like He threw two interceptions versus the Texans, which were horrible. Yeah. And in that game, you're like, if I'm the coach, my goodness, I cannot trust Fields. Like, he can't lose us this game, so we're just going to run the ball. That's it. And that's what they did. Why are they trying to win, though? I mean, players you, play in the NFL, to win. you have to win. Players play to win. So, this he has so few dropbacks, but has a ton of sacks, which and speaks turnovers. to how inefficient he is and his pocket presence is. And that's why it's so concerning. Jenny was confused reading that. So, I appreciate and, it. Yeah, and that's why it's so concerning because the running game is going. Khalil Herbert had a monster day. It was. It's going. It was great. The offensive line is at least average. And there are plays in the game where I'm like, ah, Fields, you got the open wheel right there. You, you got somebody in the seam right there. These receivers on paper, I know they look bad, but there are plays where they're schemed open and it's Fields being inaccurate. He's not hitting them. And the way the co- the coaches are calling the game – it, it feels like there's a lack of trust in Justin Fields. And that is that just tells me that in practice, he's not doing so well. So in the game, they're putting him in a position to not mess up as much as possible because they feel like he probably will. That's terrifying. We have to remember, Ryan Pose did not draft him. This is not his quarterback. He inherited Justin Fields. He may not think he's the guy. He may want his own quarterback. That is concerning. And also, real quick before you go, this can't last forever, right? I think at some point, especially if this run game keeps going, their backups are Nathan Peterman and Trevor Simeon. So not good options by any means. Let's respect on Trevor. But if this is the offense they have to run, eventually one of these guys are going to come in because you cannot run an offense like this in 2022. You cannot have 11 attempts, 15 attempts per game. You're not going to be able to win games. And yes, they should be trying to lose if you're thinking outside looking in and get a better draft pick, but the coach is trying to win, the players are trying to win. So they're going to have to make changes at some time. It's crazy to think Justin Fields could get sat for one of these guys, but you can't run an offense like this. I don't think that's going to happen. Get sat? I don't think so. You can't I think they'll go the attempts. entire season attempting 17 passes in one I, sit I don't know, man. I really don't know. I just have a hard time believing they'll sit fields in I have game. a hard time too, but unless he has like an absolute four or five interception stinker. And they he could if they throws it 30 times, he'll, it'll happen. Sadly, I love him, but it'll happen the way he's been playing. Well, the Chicago Bears management, they I forgot. I think Daniel Greenberg throughout the coat, they said they hunt Justin Fields is their guy. Hundred percent. He's gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. So it's like now he's has he been playing shit in the limited dropbacks that he's had? Of course, he hasn't been good. He's been really, really fucking bad. The run game has been good, but I do think that you still, if you like, as a when you get a quarterback, and he's a young guy, you got to give him the attempts, even though they're not good. You still have to give him the attempts. Pro- Attempts probably to get his confidence. Maybe his confidence is fucking low right now. Maybe he's thinking yeah. like, damn, they don't trust me. Damn, I'm not playing good. I go out there. I'm trying to make a play, and I just fuck up. The accuracy isn't there. So 2-1 and one isn't ideal for the Bears because they're trying to get a top pick. And, you know, if they keep winning fucking weird games like this with the run game, it's going to sabotage. Because like you said, if they don't end up getting a top five, top six pick or whatever, I don't know the, the QB class coming. I don't know how high they're going to be. But if they don't get a pick that's good enough, to get a top quarterback, they'll be stuck with Fields yet again. But they can't. You can't run this off. You're not going to win games like this. Well, it's a so, 1978 offense. I know they're two and one. I get it, Bears fans. You have two wins. I comprehend that. You're not going to win. You're games not good. This way. You're this, not that's good. That's the thing too. too is that Davis Mills before the season, I said the Texans should put the ball in his hands. Let's see what he has. Davis Mills has been bad too. He has three touchdowns, two interceptions, 58 percent completion percentage on the year, and he threw an interception on what was what could have been a game-winning drive right to Roquan Smith. So this is ultimately coming full circle to ask you guys, guys this question. 
based off of how Justin Fields and Davis Mills are looking right now, are you investing on either one of these guys? I'm glad you gave me that option of if I don't have to invest in either. Prior to this past Sunday, yes, I would have been more likely to invest in Fields because I believe the situation's poor and that they'll have a ton of cap space next season. They'll have a very high draft pick. They'll be able to fill out this roster and put him in a better situation. Then you invest long-term in Fields, $25. That's all day. But he played extremely poor, and he's looked bad basically for more often than not every single game so far. So it's hard to be confident in wanting to invest in someone that's played as poor when he was twenty. he's $25, but before the season, Tua was 29 And we saw the vision with Tua. With Justin Fields, as of right now, at $25, I can't be here sitting here saying to you guys, watching us, throw some money in Justin Fields when he's shown you nothing. The, the Justin reason, Jefferson's like $22 yeah. right now. I'm putting my money in Justin Jefferson or Justin Fields. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, uh, and not only that, before you go, Riff, but like... <clears throat> Justin Fields at $25. The reason I'm not investing into him is because this front office has no ties to him at quarterback. They did not draft him. They can easily replace him next season. And Fields does not look good. And Davis Mills has not looked good either this season. And he's not somebody I'm uber, uber confident in. So I, I wouldn't invest in any of these guys personally. I'm not looking to invest in either. Like if I, I still think Justin Fields has the higher ceiling, but he has the lower floor. I think Davis Mills could be a backup. You if know it what is I mean? one guy... Maybe Fields, I'm just because, because yes, if Fields does hit and he figures this out and they get the offense right, he could turn into a really good quarterback. But his floor is really low right now. Investing is taking a chance. Investing is gambling. I would probably invest in Fields uh, as I love him. You still would, yeah. I I, I love Fields. You know he's I do too, bro. He, but you got I, I look at it. You got to take the gamble. I'm here watching the highlights. Yeah, he oh replay. God. Yeah, his highlights. Bro, this suck. throw over the middle of the field is so off. Like, it's not even close. Yeah, highlights stink. Oh, my Lord. I think Darnell Mooney has, like, 50 yards on the he also And that's what's, that's what's insane to me. He got locked Darnell up Mooney was, his four receptions. was yeah, and excellent in year two. It's kind of like, you know, I was watching yeah. the Texans game. It's Darnell Mooney's running a crosser and fields just throws the ball so ridiculously high. Oh, my high God. That on the sideline, you're saying? Yeah, that Mooney yes. has to really stretch out to catch it and he just can't. He just doesn't have he can't high point it's it. Ugly, man. This is like this is like shacking a fool. Yeah. So you said so you'd invest in fields just because you believe in him? I didn't I I didn't I'd invest in fields because the Chicago Bears are gonna have a hundred million dollars in cap space. Facts. Fields has the athletic ability to thrive in this new NFL and you got to put the confidence in him. I think right now he's played like shit. It has been three games. He wasn't good in the first year, but it wasn't a lot of, you know, it wasn't a lot of reps. This year he's not getting a lot of reps. But, you know, you got to take the gamble. And I think I would probably take the gamble on his raw ability and his talent. So I would I would gamble on Justin Fields. All right, Fields. this is all I'm gonna, and the last thing I'm going to say on the matter. Justin Fields needs to really look. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry for blanking on his name really badly. Uh Mooney come No, no, no. Oh my god. Montgomery. No, Eagles quarterback. I'm blanking oh, like hurts. I just had a str- oh. like a mental wow. lapse so bad. Yes, he needs it's to go last season. To figure out. No, I no, I'm so sorry. I really just one of those brain just went blank. Go look at Jalen Hurts last season. He was not a great passer by any means, but he was effective on the ground was the main reason why the Eagles were the number 1 rush offense. Fields has the ability to be a great mobile quarterback, a great rushing quarterback. While you're having struggles with your arm, figure something else the out. Horse was never this bad. No, I, I'm not this, disagreeing. Not his no, I'm not disagreeing. And, and this is why when we when we talk about quarterbacks, I'm very nitpicky. Because I remember after week one, we came here, and I told you guys, you know, Fields, the Bears won and stuff. And I told you guys the two touchdowns Fields had were complete defensive breakdowns. Those are the two best plays of his season so far. Yeah, but what I'm saying, Fields has two touchdowns on a year. And the two touchdowns he had were complete breakdowns of de- of of the defense. They were not l- high level throws that he made. That wow, he fitted in between two defenders. Oh, he fitted in. He fit. He got it in this soft spot of the zone. They were wide open. Like you have to make that. It was like any quarterback in the NFL can make that throw. Outside of those plays, he has not had a touchdown drive. Like for him, a passing touchdown drive. It's just there. The reason the Eagles stuck with Hertz was because he was actually providing them some kind of substance. We also even had though nobody the, else. No, no doubt. No doubt about Neither that. Do they. But yeah. the fact that he was able to 
figure out that I can be successful in this offense, even if my arm is a weak point in my game right now, it just speaks to, one, just the ability to be a winner and try and find any which way to get an advantage, but also self-realization. This is what's going to best benefit me and the team. Fields right now is trying to to be a Superman right now. He's trying to be Superman right now. You need to put pride aside and, and, and... Cater to your strengths right now. Hit the lab in this offseason. Work on your passing, which is what Hurts did, and we're seeing it pay dividends. But until then, you got to find another avenue. On to brighter things, still in the topic of mojo. Zach Wilson's price right now is $32. He is returning soon against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Go. Hopefully. You Let's know, we, go. got, we got the Zach Wilson jersey in the back. We got the Zach Wilson Funko. What are your expectations for Zach Wilson? Is he going off week four? Let me just say this really, fart? really quick. No, no, that might have been my oh, finger. Okay. Um, him costing $32 and Tua costing 29 at the start of the season still boggles my mind. Does Mojo have an agenda? No, most definitely. Something's going on. Well, listen, because the they know workings. Zach Wilson can make those highlight <laughs> splashy off platform. You been? saw the Titans game. Zach Wilson was crazy. <laughs> Let's, and Tua listen, is the only listen, player in his class at the quarterback position, I have a winning record. Even why with, is there the disrespect? Even even with Joe Zach. Flacco, even with Joe Flacco, the Jets have had a top twenty offense. Add Zach Wilson, I mean, this 20. offense is going to be explosive. Joe We're going to beat yeah, the Steelers, and the Jets' just... offense has been waiting to erupt. And Zach Wilson is like the lava. He's rumbling. It's been a, it's it's a, a nice crazy. offense. It's very Zach cute. is going to go crazy. Very cute offense. I ain't gonna lie. The Wilson to Wilson connection, the Wilson to Moore connection. No. Let's stop playing. Zach Wilson is going to go crazy. Garrett Wilson's tough. This offense should definitely take a boost, no doubt. To to put the jokes aside, one hundred percent. Garrett Wilson. I think we spoke a little bit about this. He benefited from Joe Flacco starting because it allowed him to get early work in the offense. I'm not sure, or I'm not confident that that Wilson would have been able to to provide that type of output for Garrett. Um, but I'll say this, Zach has to realize Garrett Wilson's a trustworthy option. He knows that he can have sex with, uh, sex, excuse me, uh, whoa, to have, what to have success, <laughs> to have success whoa. with, Yo, with, bro, with dude, goodness. honestly, it, that was I crazy. Miss poke. <laughs> success, sex, it happens. <laughs> He knows he can have sex. <laughs> bro, trying to go right back. Yeah, yeah, like, 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 he wasn't going to stop or nothing. Going. Like, guys, yeah, nuts. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, though, $32 are you investing in... Nah, you can't finish, bro. I ain't gonna lie. You can't finish. You gotta let that go, bro. $32 to steal for Zach Wilson, man. Steel is strong. $32 is the floor for Zach Wilson. What he can do with this offense, with LaFleur, with the weapons around him, with the running backs, the offensive line I'm worried about. I'm worried about the offensive line. Jesus Christ. Three tackles on IR. It's only the Jets that could go through some shit like this where three tackles go on IR. Beckton's out for the year. Dwayne Brown and Fan are out for at least four more weeks. The offensive line I'm worried about, but with these weapons, with LaFleur, with the running backs, $32, man, get Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's going to be a franchise what's, guy. What's, I've been saying this it. about? Just and, pounding, and I know, and I know people. Point down. Woo. And I know, I know people on everywhere. I know people on YouTube, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram, <laughs> everywhere. People think I'm biased towards Zach Wilson. I'm not biased. I just know talent when I see it. Oh. And that's Zach Wilson. Well, what happened with Tua? I'm investing 100%. Well, what happened with Tua? What do you mean Tua? Is it, Tua's still a wait and see. What about... Oh, uh, <laughs> come, the truth comes out. So, are you taking the 32? Nah, $32 is a very firm price. I think that's a steal. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he'll be at 80 in about price. a year or two. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, that's crazy. I don't know about 80. No, I, I think he'll be there. I, I think mean, he has Herbert, a Who's at the 80s right now? Let's there's there's four, five quarterbacks at 100. I want to say it's Brady, it's Mahomes, it's Rodgers, Probably it's Allen. Ryan, and it's... Uh, Stafford, I'm I a think mojo freak for that. Show me if Zach consistently gets better. I think he should be about he should be at like 40 plus. At, Matt at Ryan at 105. I yep. am shorting, I'm nice. short, yeah, short, shorting. short, yeah, absolutely. Um, Herbert in three years, 90 bucks. Herbert is so that does that ask a question to him? Excuse me, are you are you longing or shorting Zach Wilson stock? Long you gotta it. long it, long it. I'm Quarterba- long quarterbacks. Go look at Andy Dalton. Go look at Mariota. Like Go look, like not Mariota. I apologize. Dalton's fifty four. Uh, he's business. a mediocre quarterback. Nasty business. It's Mariota's like, thirty three. That's what it was. Zach Wilson can hit those prices easily. Without a doubt. Long, he's long and he's going to be the franchise guy in New York Jets. Read me some around the fifties. Read me the quarterbacks in the fifties. Do you tell me what Allen's is? Uh, no, Allen's is high. Read so, me Jalen Hurts' price. Jalen Hurts forty seven. Like, yep. mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts forty seven dollars right now. He's taken a huge leap this season. The Eagles have taken a huge leap. Now, 
what do you think about this leap the Eagles have taken this year and Jalen Hurts? God, let me go. Yeah, God, my friends, my brothers <laughs> at this table. <laughs> Rev, I wish I could get you involved in this. My brothers, we've been told him about him. Ah. Uh, you guys, you know it's funny, Drew, Drew, because last week you had your moment with Tua. 100% understand. You had your black book. You brought out all the people who did you wrong. I don't have a black book today. All I did, I went to you two, pick aside Jalen Hurts. Right after that Tampa Bay game, we had a discussion about Jalen Hurts. And I simply said, if you're a Hurts believer, this game does nothing. If you don't think he's the guy, this game does everything. Joel, what my I'll friend do. to the right. He said Jalen Hurts is a career backup spot Damn. starter. Jesus That's who Jalen Hurts is. No way. He was no. going back and forth. He was that like, was he's got Tyrod Taylor, but he's a career backup. But Tyrod Taylor doing his regular, T-Mobile. not picking the side shit. Drew, not as bad, but you can't trust him as a passer. You don't think he could be a franchise guy. Ugh. I can't even call him a good passer. He was my, good, my friend, River Brown. We were on the show a while ago. I said, are you a believer in Hurts? He said, no, got to see it yet. <laughs> got to see it. I've been the only one at this table banging Jalen Hurts' name. Yo. Say he's a franchise <laughs> guy. Same. I said name at the end because I knew it was going to come <laughs> off wrong. I've been the only guy saying up here, he's a franchise guy. The Eagles have their answer. I know the last year the arm wasn't there yet. The rushing ability kept him that job. His leadership kept him that job. Every week he got a little bit better. He improved his rookie year to his sophomore year. His sophomore year to his junior year. Number three in passing yards. Number one yards per attempt. Number one yards per completion. Number five in QBR. One interception wasn't even his fault. We've seen the progress as a passer. I'm not even massive on completion percentage, but I know some of you are. Number six in completion percentage while still being number one in yards per attempt. Number one yards per completion. Still having the second most rushing yards by any quarterback just behind Lamar Jackson, who we're going to talk about a little bit later. The Eagles have found the franchise guy. He's their quarterback. This isn't an overreaction. We've seen the progress year from year to year. Now he's exploring this offense with A.J. Brown, with Devonta Smith year two. Dallas Goddard's taking a backseat. The offensive line's been phenomenal. I get it. The defensive line, the defense as a whole has been great. But guess what? The Eagles have cap space next year. They're not paying Jalen Hurts. The picks. Eagles have two first-round picks next year, and they have two second-round picks the year after that. The Eagles and Howie Roseman have built this team from the ground not from the ground, but from the Carson Wentz era, have revamped this team, brought in new life on the offensive side with Devonta Smith, the first-round pick, with A.J. Brown traded him, bringing in guys like Jordan Davis, who have been phenomenal so far, Darius Slay, who's been one of the better quarterbacks over the last two seasons. Now they're going to be building this team even more with the draft capital, with the cap space, and a bad NFC, and a bad NFC East. I feel bad for the NFC East because this is going to be the Eagles' division to win year in and year out. Now the only question is, What's their ceiling in the NFC? Because right now, the only team I think that legitimately could be better than them, the Bucks, fully healthy because we have not seen that receiving core. Week one, we saw it a little bit. Then week two, week three with Mike Evans suspended, Julio out, all these guys. That's the only thing stopping me from going all the way in because we know Brady, that Bucks defense that can stop the run, although they have been throwing the ball a ton. Jalen Hurts, we, we said it, number five in, in uh, or number three in passing yards. Jalen Hurts is here. He's arrived. It feels good to be here. Because I knew it all along. <coughs> you know, Brave, I know you're going to go. And I know I've been cutting you off the entire show. I understand these overreactions with me when it comes to the Jets. You know, with Zach Wilson, because I know people out there that are watching, oh, Joel thinks Zach Wilson's a franchise guy. He hasn't proven it. I believe in Zach in college, and I'm a Jets fan. I'm going to believe. The fact that you guys are so... <laughs> Clearly biased to Tua and to Hurts. Three weeks into the season, we're calling them franchise quarterbacks. It it's ridiculous. Here's like, what happens. Jalen Hurts has taken a step forward, but we also have to recognize the Eagles offense and how similar to Tua. It's a lot of elementary schemes are going up against. He's making hard throws. He's making tight window throws. He's making throws down the field, over the middle, on the sidelines, in the end zone. He is doing everything. Against Minnesota, everything was wide open. Against No, he had multiple throws in tight coverage. Multiple throws. Against the Commanders. No, against against Minnesota. Minnesota, I saw a lot of no, wide open. You saw stuff. open throws. If you watch all twenty two, you're a film guy. I expect you to. He made multiple tight window throws, and he did it against the Commanders as well. Jalen Hurts, to, uh, they're off to hot starts. This right here is all you really need. 15-plus attempt rate, excuse me, 15-yard uh, attempt rates. 
you have Jalen Hurts at 16%. He's completed those at 56%. That is the fourth highest. He has great deep threats. That's what happens when you, you have, have to hit great throws, deep threats. You? you know what my problem is? That's been is. my biggest gripe with him, and he's doing Dude, it. Dude, but like, what, what, when is... When these quarterbacks get into adversity, when they're facing a team like the Bucks that scheme up against them Did in the playoffs, you say Minnesota's going to the NFC Championship? Their defense is suspect. We know oh, that. Detroit oh, okay, was, it's suspect now. Detroit it's was. Suspect what now. do you mean it's suspect now? We have film on no, them. They, they are my, suspect. My good friend, Brown, they're, so they're, they're, a, unit. they're a bottom twenty D, DVOA defensive unit. Mm. When the Eagles start facing real life adversity, elite defenses, and Hurts is playing at this level, then I'm 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 like okay. He's taking steps to be at that franchise level. But I'm not saying he's a franchise guy after three weeks or Tua. You know, but that, it, he just played very well against the Bills. We're talking about one of the best defense in the league. Solid. Yeah, 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 it was different. Why? Tua played play. solid. He, he won the game and he, he was a huge factor the in Dolphins the win. The Dolphins stopped the, bank, the Bills the twice defense down the stretch. Won the game. And he had a game winning drive. He he was credited for a game winning drive. He was. Was he? That's Did he get the credit ridiculous. for it? Yeah. Take that. I'm fucking oozing. I'm just gonna tell you this <laughs> in advance. Shout out to Howie Roseman. You know, the last time we started off this great, I remember it so vividly. The last time it was this much excitement, this much electricity in Philly, we won a championship. You know, I'm not gonna say go that far, but um You've touched down on Jalen Hurts. You went crazy, so I'm going to give you that. I'm going to speak on everything else. The defense has been fucking amazing. The secondary has been great. Darius Slay Jr., he yeah. looks like he's beating for all the time. He has been impressive. A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith finally got it going. Jalen Hurts in the run game. Howie Roseman, He's. we have draft capital, and we have cap space going into next season. Our linebacking core has been better than expected. Our, t- our team right now as a whole, we just look really complete. We just look like one of the most complete teams in the league. And we talked about it in the offseason. Me and Dells, we chopped it up. It really was just up to Jalen Hurts. The team is yeah. there. The same with Miami. It was up to Jalen Hurts and Tua. The offense, just speaking on the offenses, the offense is there. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, oh, guys are wide open or, you know, you – you you, you want to make your quarterback have an easy job on the field. So what's the job as the GM? To go get the fucking weapons for them. And that's what they did. Now it looks easy because they have the guys for them. So now, like you said, have we not played the greatest of defenses? Yeah, that you can say that. But if we're looking at the schedule we have, we're being realistic, we're not going to see much great defenses throughout the season. They're favored in every game. Yeah, we're going to pretty much walk, going we're, we're going to run away with the, with the NFC undefeated? title. This is, this is you undefeated. know, <laughs> shit. and I know because I'm critical of these quarterbacks, people can label me as this hater or whatever, but it's you just kind of being are. realistic because when I, look at a fran- when I look at a franchise quarterback, so I look at these quarterbacks that are in these situations, that are great situations, Coming to the season, we knew the Eagles had one of the best rosters in the NFL. It was just about Hurts taking that leap. And has he been great? Yes. But when I think about quarterbacks, I think of it like, how many quarterbacks can I take, put into this situation, and they will look similar or better? And when I think about Tua and Hurts, there are a lot of quarterbacks that I can just plug in, and they would look great in those situations. What about Matthew Stafford? Matthew Stafford would be, would be great in Philly right now with his roster. No, but I'm saying he left Detroit and he went to a seemingly perfect situation yes. for him. And yes. then the winning but I don't think that's a knock. No, that's not, not a knock. knock, but he was in a historically bad situation in Detroit. That's and fair. it's not like he would like he had some years in Detroit where it was good, mm. but the majority was bad. But that was like my knock on Stafford too last year and he played tremendous, right? But how many quarterbacks can I put in Stafford's position? And they can succeed with that roster. We saw Jared Goff do it. He elevated the squad to Super Bowl level and they won it. But that that's how I view the position. And Hurts, like, I don't want to take anything away from it because he's been great. The deep ball, he's one of the better deep ball passers in the NFL. We saw that in the Commanders game in the Minnesota game. Every game this season, quite frankly, Devontae Smith went off for 169 yards. Hurts had a tremendous game. Games. Yeah, he's had tremendous Season. games. He's, he's been great. He's been game. great these first three games. I think against the Commanders, it was a complete ass kicking. They beat them twenty four to eight. It wasn't even close. It was twenty four to two at one point, and 
Their defense is suffocating. They were pressuring Wentz all day. The coverage was amazing. The defensive line had nine sacks, 17 quarterback hits, and eight tackles for a loss. The only good thing about the Commanders, their run defense was solid. But what does that do? When the Commanders have to allocate more defenders in the in the box to stop the run because the Eagles do that at such a high level, it now allows for wide open guys to run across on crosses and to hit Perfect. those open guys. Jalen Hurts it, plays a big factor in that run game too. No, it, it does, but it's also having one of the league's best offensive line too. Helps. But Hurts definitely plays a big factor into that. But it, it makes it easier. So what happens when you face a team that doesn't have to allocate those resources in the box and they can have more people in coverage? Well, How is that going to look? Outside of the box, those are my questions. Who can do it? The Jacks can do it. And I think they're going to do it this weekend. No, I'm talking about the NFC. Did the Titans do it last year? When? With, when? Or not even last year, but the last few years with Derrick Henry. They're always allocating to the run. No, I'm just talking you about... you have Ryan Tannehill, who is a middle-of-the-pack quarterback. He did play well for that's a couple of years. That's what I'm saying. But I'm you just have talking about A.J. Brown and, in that situation play phenomenal. And, and Ryan, Tannehill, Ryan Tannehill in 2019 and 2020, he had top-10 quarterback-like seasons. But you wouldn't call him a top-10 quarterback because you knew the system was masking his deficiencies. Now he was I'm not, a top-10 quarterback. Statistically, he was, but I wouldn't have ranked him as a top-10 guy. You wouldn't have put him 10? No, I think maybe like 12, 13-ish. And Tannehill's a good quarterback. That second year? Not the first year with Tennessee where they overachieved. I don't think the, the system isn't masking Hurts' deficiencies. I think he's, he's elevating really his game like with you get, the system I being get, great. Joel, I completely get comparing him to other quarterbacks and saying who performs well in these situations. But you also have to look at Jalen Hurts coming out of college, his first year, second year, third he's year. Getting the progression every single year. And he's mobile. And he's getting better as a passer. What more could you ask for right now? You can't. Like, I'm not sure, saying, I'm not Josh saying you Allen, can. Herbert, these guys, of course. I'm deal. not saying you're, I'm asking for more. I'm not asking for more. What I am doing is not all of a sudden three games he's been great and saying, yep, automatic sign and seal, he's a franchise guy. Because what happens in a wild card game, if it's a tough matchup and he lays an egg, there's going to be dialogue about replacing him. Like, there, that's going to happen. Was there dialogue about replacing Kyler last year? That's different. That's different. Kyler, he laid an egg. But Kyler has He's had... Bad Kyler, Ky- Kyler, half, Kyler has the passing attributes. Now, no, does, I'm not even earlier, saying that. Yes. I'm not even saying that. Kyler's never had a roster this good. No. He so has, has Jalen Hurts. Yes. Kyler Murray is, came into a situation where they had the number one pick. And each year they have gotten better. So that, that to me is the major difference. And like Kyler put him in this situation... He'll look just as good, if not better, so than Jalen Hurts. What guys at Jalen Hurts, 24 years old, on his contract, are you going out and replacing him with? That's what, All I'm saying is that I, after I three know. games, I am not just saying, signed and sealed, this is a franchise guy. I'm not doing it. How much? That's what, just not. What, what, I'll tell you what, I really, you said it perfectly. You called me out, and that's very valid because my biggest critique of Jalen Hurts was his arm. I said, once you show me that you can do it as a passer, there will be nothing for me to say because as a mobile quarterback, he's one of the best there is. But the reason why the Bucks were able to completely shut down that offense was because they stopped the, stopped the run and forced Jalen to throw. That's the recipe to lose if you're the Eagles. This season... We also didn't have an A.J. Brown. That's also very true. This season, exactly to my, to my next point, you bring in A.J. Brown. We had a rookie receiver. To not too. only open up Devonta Smith, but now you're adding A.J. Brown, who is one of the most talented wide receivers yeah. in the NFL. And Jalen, on top of it, has put the work in to progress as a passer. That was my only critique thus far. He shut me up significantly. I can't be hypercritical of him going forward. He's looked fantastic. Yes, the defense he's played has been not of where we can truly evaluate against the top-tier defenses. That being said, as of right now, I'm not going to... I'm not going to... Hold it against him because he hasn't because he's shown it and he's played extremely well. So you're saying he signed us to the franchise quarterback? I think I'm in. <laughs> I just like to wait these things out, especially at a position that's so complicated. Let me ask you. Now, this is exactly what I wanted to ask and I was going to say earlier, but you were giving your spiel and I apologize for cutting you off. If Zach comes in and balls out against the Steelers, franchise guy. I'm already insanely biased towards Zach. No, but that has done it. Answer my question. Interesting. I would say yes. All right, now, but, I'm going to ask um, you, Zach who's is, not biased, biased towards Zach. Zach comes out, 300 yards, two yes, touchdowns. Yes, keep doing it. But you're not in on franchise? Yes, keep doing it. 300 yards, two touchdowns. Yes, to keep doing it. 
Okay. He does it for three weeks, like Jalen Hurts has done. You're Correct. saying his franchise. Hurts has made the playoffs with the team. Let's not. Say, act Hurts like looked good last year. Yeah, Hurts has act stayed like this healthy. Just been a three week thing. He he did I, get us. Zach to the needs last to do it multiple. But multiple no, weeks no, no, let me ask. Was we okay knew, last we knew, season. but we knew about Trevor, right? We 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 knew the potential was there. Yes. He was awful last season. Yeah. But we knew the potential sense. was there. He's had three weeks. He was under the worst head coach in NFL. Absolutely. Trevor's also a tough. He's had three weeks of looking amazing. We're in. Correct. Yeah. We're I've all been in. in on Trevor in the offseason. No one, no, we've, we've but, no, no well, one. I know, I'm saying, I know oh, he had Zach, look, but Trevor was th- a much is, better prospect. Absolutely. Than Zach. This, this is. I know what you're trying to do, Drew. But this is my rebuttal to that. If Joe wants to call Jalen Hurts a franchise guy, I don't. I don't care year, because I already know Joe likes Jalen Hurts. No, this isn't an overreaction he, from you. Not even. And I'm not calling. Not, it an I'm not. I'm not even saying it's an overreaction or it's not. I'm just saying he likes Jalen Hurts. So anything good that Hurts does, he's gonna say he's only done good that that's proof that he's a franchise guy. And if if something bad happens, like the Bucks game, he'll say if you're a Hurts believer, it doesn't matter because he already likes Hurts. If you already like a certain guy, you're going to stick with them. That Bucks game. I don't have up. any agenda it's towards Hurts, so I'm not gonna just say he's a franchise guy when it's absolutely apparent and What's he need, evident. A play, a I mean, what, it hasn't looked. Evident and apparent as of this right now. The number one games, offense in the bro. league. It's three games. But, and they but were the a whole last season of making last season. the playoffs last year. Last what season, I had them making the playoffs. What's he need to do? But that has nothing to do with my point. Are you diminishing Jalen Hurts? What's he need to do? I'm not diminishing Jalen Hurts. No, I'm not. Does it sound like I'm, I'm diminishing Jalen Hurts? But, see, I just said, King, I'm not just saying listen, he's a franchise guy listen, automatically. Listen to what I'm saying because that's not what I'm saying you're saying. All I'm saying is them making the playoffs last year and you saying that they were going to make the playoffs has nothing to do with what I'm trying to make the point of. Last season, he wasn't a great passer, but a great rusher, and good enough that the team made the playoffs. Whether you knew, knew that was going to happen or not has nothing to do with what I want to say. But he had success. This season, they've come out. They've been the best team in football, arguably. Number one in offense, top five in defense. Jalen Hurts has been at the forefront of that. So last year, he's shown that he could have success and play winning football. And now this year, he's only played... Probably 10 out of 10 football. So why They're, it's not just three games. I think Riv is going to relate to me on this subject. In the NBA, when we talk about superstar players, yeah. we're talking about the best of the best. Fact. Is Devin Booker a star? Yes. Is John Morant a star? Yes. Do you call them superstars? Is franchise quarterback calling them superstars? Yes, yes it is. What? It is. A, the franchise quarterback is a very reserved That's spot. That's not true. Is Kyler Murray a superstar? Kyler Murray, to me... Matthew I, Stafford, you would have never called him a superstar. Of course he's a franchise guy. I think Stafford is a franchise guy. He's a top 10 quarterback. Of course he is. Top 10 quarterbacks are superstars. Con- top 10 quarterbacks are the franchise guys. Like, Absolutely, for example... They're not superstars. For example, that, guys... Yeah, guys so for no, example, here's the superstars in the NFL. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson, superstar. Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Joe Burrow. I wouldn't go Justin as far as saying Herbert's a superstar. Herbert's the last name, and I and that one is I'm fringe right so now. Joe, if Joe, yes, if Joe Burrow is. is a hold up, we're getting off topic here. Mm-hmm. Really I quick, think, we'll make this. I think the quarterbacks that are teetering, where like some games they're franchise guys, some games they they show you why. Like, why did I pay this guy that much money? Kirk Cousins falls into that. Derek Carr falls into that. Dak Prescott falls into that. Those three guys are quarterbacks that I view like. Sometimes the franchise level. Other times you're like, why did I pay this guy this much money? Right now, am I at a point where I'm saying Jalen Hurts or Tua or just as good as Dak Prescott? I'm not. You should be. Why? After three games? They've looked great. Like, why? Dak Prescott what is rookie need season. To do? What does Hurts need to do? Yeah, just keep proving it. Okay. And it's also that's fine. it's that's also fine. in diff- it's also can you elevate? That that's the biggest thing. Like so wait, can I ask Josh question? Josh Allen, we see when things break down a, around him, he can he he can make he can just take sh- shit out of his ass and do it. Like Mahomes, like all these guys, they can just do it. So, so it's about it from, it's about it two of this season it's already. About doing we've it. So seen if it from, Hertz, we've seen it from your boy Hertz. So if Hertz goes into the playoffs, wins a playoff game, where do you, where would you put him? Because Dak only has one playoff win. I think right now he's Jalen had just Hurts, as good as a team as Jalen Hurts. Coming to the season, I believe I had Jalen Hurts as the 16th or 17th best quarterback in the NFL. Okay, I think if he keeps this pace and wins a playoff game, you put him in the car. He's a down. lot. He's a yeah. He's in right, that yeah. tier that for okay. sure. That he's in that tier for sure. Right, cool. But if you lose it, like Joe Burrow took a team to the Super Bowl. 
Well, I think that's you, a, that's I, think you could, I don't think, think we're saying that he's on Joe Burrow's I think you could win a Super right Bowl with a top but 12, that, 13 quarterback. That means you're a franchise perfect quarterback. perfect situation. Not necessarily. Joe Burrow's a franchise quarterback. Yeah, but again, so is Matthew Stafford, but you're not calling him a superstar. When did I say he's not a superstar? But all right, So Matthew Stafford's a superstar. He's a franchise quarterback for sure. So he's a superstar. No. I took the NFL, I took the NBA analogy to make it simpler. I know, but you, you kind of superstar. Well, it's superstars, different. Superstars it's different because in the NBA, there are ten guys that are franchise changing guys. There's probably a little bit less in the NFL. There's less than that that can actually take a franchise and win with them. Like Matthew Stafford in Detroit, he put up great stats, but he didn't win automatically. In, in the NFL, it's more of a team game, so it's harder to dictate that. Absolutely. But Matthew Stafford is for sure a franchise quarterback. He's been that his entire career. Right. You know, it, superstar, we're talking about Josh Allen, Patrick Absolutely. Mahomes, yeah. Correct. which they're franchise guys too. Correct. Matthew Staff is a franchise quarterback, but yes, you're right. I wouldn't classify him as a superstar because that's the tier for the Allen Absolutely. Mahomes, Absolutely. the Rodgers, the Brady's, Brady. and Herbert, Herbert is creeping into that Correct. area. I'm with you. But that that's what that's the difference. That's a distinction for me. And after three games, I'm not just going to prop Jalen Hurts into this. Is Lamar this a superstar? Yeah, I think he has to. Yeah, be. Yep. no, Lamar's think, definitely. Yeah, Lamar's superstar, superstar too. Okay, good. You know, there are certain guys, but like you know, you can be a, a great big time player and not be in that tier. You know, John Morant See, but no was all saying, NBA. I don't think any one of us, or at least me and Joel, he just said was, he's a franchise guy. But he you said after three no, games, he's, he's not saying. Guy. But see, now this is where you're losing me. Did he not say that? Because we're not saying he's a superstar. You're trying to say we're throwing. You him said he's a, a franchise quarterback. He doesn't but believe again, he's a franchise guy. The Eagles guy not viewing him as a franchise guy. Of course we are. They have the Eagles. I think they're the see I, it. I, I, I think you're kind of losing your initial point because you're trying to say he's not with the the Brady, the Rodgers, the yeah, Allen's, no. the Mahomes, no. the the Herberts. No, the I Burrow. just said he's not no. a franchise quarterback. That's all but I said. again, we you try to use it in the the basketball analogy, and you said that no, that Stafford's not in that class, Russ isn't I, in that class. Bro, I said Jalen Hurts is not as good as Dak Prescott to me. See, okay, now now That's we're on I the said. same page again. At I the end of the year, he could be in that conversation. He can easily. be. He could be in that tier, but as of right now, after three games, I'm, I'm not just propping him up in that tier. I think Dak has has a proven body of work. But you already had him at like 16. What, what's moving him up two three spots? Playoff win. Those spots are. Big gigantic leap. Not really, because he had Matt Ryan in front of him, correct? Yeah, I, so, I, I mean, like that's an easy. You, that's an that's easy an jump. Easy that's jump. An easy jump. Yeah, I two the same. Easy yeah. jump. But Matt Ryan, I think, with his age, um, he's falling out of that faster than he's climbing up the rankings. No doubt. So you know, do you have Tannehill in front of him. Curious. I did have Tannehill. So that's another. Or one. That's I did. Easy I jump. You guys are a little bit, you know, declining a little bit. So. so I'm saying, like, it's not crazy to put him at I just 13 think, right now. Hey, 14. he's in a perfect situation. I'm happy for it. Howie did a great job of putting the talent around him. And he's sure. performing. That's all I care about. I just want to win. Yeah. All that extra shit. He may. He don't have to be top 10 right now. Now, Howie might be the best GM in football. Yeah, he's the goat. The greatest man I know personally, other than uh, my boy Myers. Going to stay and shit. Whatever. Yeah. Ten out of the fifteen on the roster drafted. Got okay, so I had Jalen Hurts at seventeen. Oh, he'll get he'll get the to guys the top over him were Jameis, which he's over Jameis. Matt Ryan, he's over both of them right now. So he to me, he's below like the Prescott, the Carr, the Cousins, the Murray. I think he can get over Carr this after no, all those guys. He could be better than Carl. So. He could be better. Than I had Carl. Ryan Tanner at twenty one. Okay, Dak, Dak that's is a fair place because Dak was injured. So that's that and where was, was Tua? Case. Like twenty twenty four. Oh. Actually, I had Trevor Lawrence a little bit too low. I did two on my quarterback. Tua and Trevor also. will climb to top sixteen, top fifteen, I think, by the end of the year. And and the reason why, like, I'm quicker to jump on the Lawrence one is because he's he was a ge- he was a Absolutely. generational prospect, and I'm not against that at all. That one's the one we we all like. Yeah, he's different. But I mean, Zach was the number two pick overall. Not generational. Like, I mean, it's not like he was. No, definitely not generational. But Trevor's generational. Zach Wilson was definitely yes, highly but, but touted. Th- this is what I'm saying. Like, if Zach Wilson had three games Let, let's say he played average for a season and he had three games where he was like out of this world fantastic and i called him a, and i call him a franchise quarterback the majority of people would still disagree with that statement i think the same way with jalen hurts like yes he's playing great and so is tua but they have to consistently do it i'm just cool. not ready after I've, three weeks drew i think hurts gonna keep doing it. he thinks Tua's is gonna keep doing it like there's nothing so far in this season that makes us think all i'm saying either, is that there is no, there, there's back. nothing wrong with you riding for your guys for sure and calling them franchise guys. For sure. The same way there's nothing wrong with me saying they're not to this point off of three games. That's fair. That that's yeah. what I'm saying. Ultimately, one of us can be right, one of us can be wrong. 
Yeah, I'm not biased. That's, that's how usually the works. show. Yeah. Love it. Well, what What about you, Riv? Do you think he's a franchise guy? Um, I tell <laughs> I tell Dells this all the time. He got to win in the playoffs for me to call him like a franchise guy. So he's been fucking. You think amazing, Kyler's though. a franchise guy? He hasn't won the playoffs. Kyler is significantly Herbert, more Herbert's talented. a franchise guy. Hasn't he hasn't won in the playoffs. He hasn't, made the hasn't playoffs. even made the playoffs. I think when you, when you have like the talent, it's different. I understand. So I'm Kyler just, and Herbert, but I think for Hertz, he, he's a little different. He has to win in the yeah. playoffs. But I know for a fact, like I, I, I know for a fact, he's gonna win the games he needs to. He's gonna get us in. But I think a playoff win would definitely put me in the. Yeah, he's he's the fucking guy for sure. So, but he's definitely. He's Climbing. right there. I mean, Climbing. he don't he don't need to be the franchise guy, like I said, for us to win. Like right now, he can just be. Yeah, you don't. We, the team we have right now. He doesn't need to be that all world superstar he, he quarterback. Doesn't. For y'all. I think Joe he's Flacco just doing it. He can right be now. a franchise he's quarterback. Just, he's he just needs doing to be. it right now. He's just playing all world. He doesn't need to play all world, but he's just there. You go. That's, just, that's Joe good. Flacco on a Super Bowl. He's not a franchise quarterback. He, like, he was all world twice. And that run he was. In that run, he was. That's what I'm saying. And if you if you would have called Joe Flacco a franchise quarterback off of that run. You would have been wrong. People Kaepernick definitely made were calling the Super him a franchise Bowl. quarterback For sure. back then. Jimmy G and made the wrong. Super Bowl. This shit can happen, bro. I sure. mean, he was a. How many years in the league was he prior to that Super Bowl run? Joe Flacco was. Mid as fuck. I think a, he got drafted. I think in two thousand eight. He got drafted the same year as Matt Ryan. Yeah. So he won the Super Bowl when in twenty twelve. Feel like he got drafted before that. Five seasons, but even then, he was never like this. His stats were never top of the line. You know. What was his stats, if you don't mind? That year, just in general, and 10. just no. Read the whole thing. Read it from from yeah, that. In the no? Baltimore's defense. Whew. So yeah, he won in 2012. So up to 2012, I'm just gonna go from 2008 to 2012. Yep, yep. 14 touchdowns, 12 picks, 21 and 12, 25 and 10, 20 and 10, 22 and 10. That's that's pretty all right. That's solid. solid but yeah. to just you know, like I said, you know, if if you would have jumped the gun on Flacco, you would have been wrong. That's not bad at all. Nah. So you're probably expecting a little bit more of a franchise. Also, you had Ray Rice at the time. That was clearly, like, the best player on the offense. Ed Reed and shit. Defense was amazing. Yep. Defense was no doubt. godly. Good Before topic. we go on to our next segment, a quick word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. In our life, we are faced with challenging situations, problems we're stuck on, or maybe we just aren't feeling well. I think that happens um, a lot in today's age. Mental yeah, health absolutely. is a very important thing, and I think it's always better to face these situations when you are guided with help and that's where better help comes in from personal experience. I've been to therapy a couple of times. It's, it's helped me um, alleviate some of the clouds that I had in my head and kind of make me think more straightforwardly. And if you're thinking about therapy, better help is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and you can switch therapists at any time. So you can go to betterhelp.com slash pick a side for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash pick a side. Pick a side for 10% off when you go to BetterHelp. I think that's awesome. Mental health awareness. Need it. Like, Need man, more of important. it. Need more of it. Especially for us, we're podcasts. We get a lot of negative comments all the time. A ton. You know what you more negative, better. More negative you take than positive. Those? You take it? Yeah. There it is. Gone. Better help. Let's do it. Lamar Jackson, has he been the MVP thus far this year? Joel, I know this is your guy, Lamar, so I'll he let is. you speak on it for first. I mean, I'm, you can speak on it first, but a question is just round table. Is he all of our MVPs outside of Drew? Maybe you might say Tua and blindside us, even though it's not that blindsided if you're asking me. But I do think he's the MVP. It's pretty damn close. He's one of those I'm, guys. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm truly curious about your answer. Right now, he's got to be the front runner. He's, uh, he, yeah, Lamar. no, no, Lamar's got to be there. But of course, I think it's a three headed race, right? Four. I'll throw respect to Hertz, but I think it's got to be Lamar. I go Tua. Tua I'll what? Go, number two. That's how we know we're in week three. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen. Through, still well, early, this but is, we're on week four. Through three weeks, Tua has been better four. than Allen. No, he, but he's three he has, now. He has more touchdowns, he has more yards. Does he have more touchdowns? What, yeah. Like one? Yeah. Probably, but like one. I don't think he's he been, has more yards. I don't think he's been he has, better. He has the highest QBR he has, in the he league. He has one better game, which was game two. He has the highest QBR in the league also. Probably has the best game of the season. I think that's what's No, Josh Allen leads the league in, in yards. I knew it. Yeah, he's, oh, so two is And he two. has more two touchdowns than two is two. Yeah, two. yeah, I figured that. Lamar's Nine to eight. I knew it. Allen's fucking him. And Allen has 1,014 passes. Allen is fucking him. And they have the same completion percentage. But Tua's up there. I would say Josh Allen probably has like 40 more. Yeah, Tua has the game too. But I think 
Yeah, the, like, six, that touchdown, the six and touchdown performance that definitely it, it propelled him. But he's in the conversation. I'm not gonna say he's not. He's in the conversation. But I think Allen's ahead. Yeah, of the him. three weeks. That's how we know we're only three weeks in. Oh, come on, because I'm, I'm first in there too. Nah, nah. It's but Mahomes got to no, be in there. Also, that's fine. Keep it. Keep that energy because you've been wrong. Ooh. So you've been wrong. When we're at week 18, is Tua going to be in the top three? Fuck no. I don't see why not. <laughs> Unless he wins the if he wins a division. That that's what I'm it. saying. Like the way their offense is playing, they're going to get a lot of wins. They are undoubtedly um, going to get a lot of wins. AFC tough, boy. AFC is tough. But Lamar's got to be it right now. I mean, he's I just mean, been all he's, world passing, he's all number world two in total yards, most passing touchdowns, number one in passer rating. He's yeah. him and Allen are like the offense for their yes. teams. Yeah. They are yeah. backpacking the yeah. shit out of their offense. But um, yeah, I think Lamar should be one. Hurts can be in a conversation. Tua, Mahomes, I think you got to throw him. Even though he lost to the Colts, he's still been pretty fucking good. You got to. I think those are the five: like Lamar, Allen, Agreed. Tua, Hurts. Mahomes. No I, order, I think Lamar Jackson is the MVP. They beat the Pages 37 to 26. He had four touchdowns, 218 yards. Mr. Rushing, one pick, man. 107 yards rushing and one touchdown. They're first in DVOA, their offense. Miami is second uh, to, you know, give props he, to Miami's he is offense. The, right he there. is the John Morant of the NFL. In and their run of game has been going. Like he's the most exciting player to watch. I think the, the, the Patriots game was the first game that the running game got going. Justin Hill brought some juice. To the offense. J.K. Dobbins first yeah. game active. The secondary made some big time plays. They got three interceptions on Mac Jones. Kyle Hamilton. Kyle yeah. Hamilton, the fumble. For sure. It, it's crazy because Mac Jones actually had a pretty good game. He had he 300 did. yards. It's just he Devontae threw. Par- Devontae Parker, yeah. eight. He, got he hurt, did though. finally fumble. Mac eight. Jones just threw boneheaded, stupid interceptions in the red zone that cost them ultimately. But to talk about Lamar, I do think he's been the unanimous MVP this season. Unanimous. Unanimous. I think he I has mean, been. If Allen would have won, I would have said. And uh, sure. But sure. Yeah, he's for right. Me, Unanimous. For me, to be honest, the Ravens should be 3-0. and I know week two they collapsed. Enough with this. Defense. Should. It's like with his Minnesota thing. They should. But we, yeah. look, but we look at Lamar, 749 passing yards, 243 rushing. If you account for his rushing and passing yards, he's top three in yards amongst all quarterbacks. Ten touchdowns, leads the NFL to two picks. Second in QBR and first in passer ratings, and also has two rushing touchdowns. Now, here's where Lamar's been special. On early downs, he ranks first amongst qualifying quarterbacks on EPA per attempt, first in EPA per pass play, first in passer rating, fifth in completion rate. And here's an area of growth for Lamar. Last year, he struggled against the Blitz. He was an average quarterback against the Blitz. And this year, teams have blitzed the Ravens on one-third of Lamar's dropbacks, and Lamar is number one in EPA per dropbacks against the Blitz. And that's his biggest area of growth. In fact, Bill Belichick knew this was a problem for him last year. So what did the Patriots do? They blitzed the shit out of Lamar in the game versus the Ravens, and Lamar made him pay. They blitzed him on 38% of his dropbacks, and on those plays, Lamar was 11 for 12, 127 yards, and four touchdowns with no picks. So that's the biggest area of growth Lamar has had. I think all these narratives about him not being this passer. No, I'm Lamar. He's one of the better passers Didn't in the NFL. And he, he said it a few no months way. ago, actually. Yeah, did you start knowing him? That was him a off? joke. Uh, Calm down. That was actually funny. Calm down. Nah, said, you, said it it, you said it you more said than no. one time. That was a joke. I no, said listen, it as a joke. I'm going to tell you. I said it as a joke. It was a funny ass joke. It is a funny joke. I said it as a joke. Is fucking hilarious. But I, I, I look back to this moment. It was after <laughs> Lamar's rookie season where he gave this interview. And when he gave it and after it, I kind of laughed because I was like, there's no way. There's no way he's going to you know be able to accomplish this. He said he wants to work in the offseason and be more Drew Brees-like, cerebral from the pocket. And after his rookie season, I was like, there's no way this is happening. But so far into his career, and, you know, after even year two, you could say he's been everything and and a bag of chips. Like, he's been that. He's been that. Real quick. Lamar or Joe Burrow? I'm still going Joe Burrow. Mm. He's got to stick to his guns. I get it. It's the wrong answer, I mean, but I look, get it. Well, Lamar's doing it in the regular season is awesome, but Burrow is, done, is doing it in the playoffs. He's done it in the playoffs. Lamar's a pl- uh, regular season doggy, big dog. He's like James Harden, where Joe Good Burrow dog. is please more res- like Jimmy please, Butler. You please know? respect He's Lamar. He's going to get it done. Please respect Lamar Jackson. I will say this. Lamar, there's one area of struggle, and I think uh, it's, it cost them versus the Dolphins, and that's why they lost outside of their defense being shit. 
He's 31st amongst qualifying quarterbacks in third down completion rate. He's only completing 34.8% of his passes on third down, 8 of 23, and he ranks 16th in EPA per play on third downs, including runs in 24th in EPA per pass attempt and 27th in passer rating. I personally So third okay. down is the down that Lamar's struggling in with, and that should improve as the season progresses, but that's where he's struggling right now. I fear for Lamar. Uh, I really do. Fear? Yeah. The way he's playing. I feel like like it's a lot of a lot of baggage that he has to, like he has to do a lot for this offense. He has to be their best runner. Same with Allen. He has to be their best runner. He has to be their playmaker. He has to be their their quarterback. And I think, you know, if he continues to stay in Baltimore, I don't know if he's gonna stay. They really have to do a better job of getting him some weapons out there because what he's doing out there. This can't last for a long, long time. Like, this is a lot of baggage. Like, he's doing a lot of shit for this team. But he's been a unanimous MVP. He's been the best player in the league at this moment. He's been the most dynamic quarterback in the league. He's been one of the best runners in the league. He's just a special physique type of man. He's just all-worldly, a very rare breed of humans. Who's right now? Yeah, no, it's it's a ridiculous type. Of, it's the same that that coach was talking about AJ Brown. Like he's just a different type of specimen. Like it's not a lot of it's a r- rare breed for him. But he's been the best player. Uh, Baltimore, I think, just their their limited playmakers on the offensive end is going to haunt them down the stretch. But I think in the regular season, Lamar is going to be great. He's going to be able to carry. But like I said, they need more guys on the offensive end to help a quarterback like Lamar. You know, also in that video, he said you can't trust Lamar as a passer. Who me? Yeah, I mean that. I also, I Bro also has evidence still. It, Still yeah, there is it? evidence what that he hasn't been able to <laughs> to be Guys. efficient in winning as needed when he needs to pass. Hey Dose. Um me and, and the Discord buddies, we had this conversation. Allen or Lamar? Josh Allen? Yes. Josh Allen. How clear of it is? Like is it Pretty it's clear. blatantly obviously, right? Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. You're, you're the guy. Listen, so I'll, I just wanted I'll, to make sure. Yeah. I I'm definitely giving Lamar's credit, no doubt. Because I kept Is he it. better than Collar? He is, bro. We could. He is. We could switch. We're a Kyler guy. But he is. You could do it. It's okay. Not gonna hold it against you. Yeah. I still don't know yet. <laughs> I still don't know. It ten fucking toes, my, my boy. I still don't my know. Um, I'll tell you what. But I what I do want to give Lamar's credit for is when before the season started and we had this talk about Lamar and his contract dispute with the, with the Baltimore Ravens front office. I said he's going to have an Aaron Judge. Season spot on where Aaron Judge put all weeks. his faith in himself to exceed expectations and get the bag that he wants. Lamar is doing exactly that right now, where he has been the most dominant at the quarterback position right now and is putting himself in a position to get paid well more than what the Baltimore Ravens were expecting to pay him. I'm excited for the bag that Lamar's going to get. And I hope that Lamar continues to have success because it's deserved. He's one of the hardest workers in the NFL. You're right. And not only that, but the leverage Lamar has. Just just point to Denver and look. You gave $245 million to this wash quarterback. Hey, Dallas. I should get $300 million. Dallas, quick question. If Eagles open up a little bit of cap and they're like, Lamar's in free agency, we want to get Lamar. I mean, Lamar's an upgrade without a doubt. But would then you, be you, hurt? All, you also would I be hurt? Yeah, I mean, Hurts is gonna find a job. No, he like, likes Lamar. I mean, oh, Lamar, like yeah. Lamar is. If I had to rank my favorite quarterbacks, yeah. Lamar, okay, favorite so players, one. Lamar is number one for me. If we get Lamar, oh my god. Yeah, but the only thing is, if you do that, you're allocating a ton of cat. Like you're paying him two hundred fifty mil, three. Like you're paying him a ton eight, of money. Eight, eight, eight. And right now, Hurts is gonna pay nothing for the next two seasons. No, I get it. Just well, that's fine because we know Lamar can carry an offense single handedly. Lamar, Brown, Brown Lamar is locked up. Might get a three hundred million dollar contract. Good. Brown is locked up. We got, he is. Go, 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 got go, it. Yeah, he's yeah. locked up. Thank you. I do think okay. um, Devonta. He got. We got locked. The pass up. catchers in Baltimore yeah, deserve some credit. Rashad Bateman is taking the leap. Duvernay's Devin Duvernay is a touchdown machine. And Mark, Mark Andrews, Andrews is, is the best tight end in the NFL. He's over Kelsey. Yes. Stam. Is that not an overreaction? No. He, okay. he was last year. He was the best tight end too. Okay, I'm just asking. But I, Kelsey is I'm amazing. Asking. They're he one is a, they're second one best B. tight end in the league. They're one A one B. Mark Andrews, Andrews is, uh, is Kelsey's one A. Andrews is one B. But he is right there. I am not putting him yet. Um. But just speak about Lamar. He's my MVP so far. 
I don't think he's unanimous just yet, like you guys are saying. I do think you have to give credit to those 3-0 and teams because we know the voters are going to give credit to them. And Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen have been fantastic as well. Uh, Mahomes had a whatever game against the Colts, but Josh Allen's been fantastic as well. When Lamar's on the field, I mean, is there ever a football player that's better than him? Aaron Donald, maybe? But other than that, is there ever a game he goes into when he steps on the field that he is not the best football player? Yeah, Mahomes. Against the Chiefs. Quarter, I guess quarterbacks, Mahomes, Allen. Yeah, okay. Those two I'm are the ones. I'm saying just straight football pass, not passing all the – like straight football player. If you had to play a backstreet game of football, I would say, just, uh, just just play with me here. God, just yeah. just play with me. I would say me. Allen because he can also run, okay. and he's a better thrower. Okay. So yeah. there's, that's right. it. That's there's, it. Just play there's, the, you yeah, know what I'm it. saying? There's legitimately – Three guys in the NFL. Who? It's Mahomes. It's it's Donald and it's Allen. That's it. Like you're taking two. a backyard game. Yes. That's I'm taking Allen because he's just a big man. I would take in Allen, a backyard but Lamar, game. But Lamar uh, might be number two. The thing is, yeah. Lamar's so shifty. That's what I'm saying. Challenge, but he could like he'll uh, like you feel me? Grab yeah, he's, he's just, got the big he's, body. He's a big man. Um, like I don't think. Size, I think. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, but physique yeah, he's different. He's Josh thicker. is. Josh he is extremely thicker. Girthier. Whoa. Um. I don't think we give <laughs> Lamar enough credit for how much he's improved as a passer. You know, the the number one that stands out is Josh Allen. Oh, my God, look at this leap. He's taken from year two leap. to year three and all of this. Lamar has have to be in that conversation as well. He just doesn't have the passing numbers because of his rushing ability the uh, and his scheme, truthfully. Passing yards. Pass, yeah, but it's because he's 26th in passing attempts right now. Josh Allen is number one. That's yeah. why we don't see the same type of production in terms of passing from Lamar, but in terms of, of just eyeball tests and the numbers too, in terms of EPA and, you know, all the advanced numbers, he has taken a significant leap on the same level as Josh Allen from his early days. He was a complete project, the 32nd overall pick in his draft, his rookie year to even his MVP season. He's improved as a passer since then. The Ravens, if they took care of business in Miami and won that game, without a doubt, he's the unanimous MVP. The one loss is going to sting just a little bit. Now, at the end of the year, it's all going to you know come to the media, and I do think the Ravens will win the division, and Lamar, without a doubt, is going to be in the conversation. I just don't have him as the unanimous MVP so far, but that's my guy, man. I'm so happy for him. He's, he's improved so much as a passer, and really just all of the critiques and criticism he's taken along the way, all the naysayers, people saying he should be running back, all of this, they look really fucking stupid right now because he's <laughs> one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He's he's in that top five conversation. He's probably number six right now, but he is right in that conversation, one of the best players in the league. He's proving them wrong, simple as that. Yep. And people that doubted him look foolish. Yeah. It's as simple as that. 100%. Yeah. Fucking idiots! <laughs> yeah, I know. Who Clowns, can, man. Who can that be? Yeah, I don't. I don't know, bro. You tell Didn't me. Did you say Sam Darnold was better than him? <laughs> yeah, did. you did really. He did. Oh, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, he did. His rookie season, you did. Yeah, I'm like, I'm I guess it. the most disrespect. That Twitter's long gone. <laughs> so the most disrespect I've ever shown Lamar was taking Kyler over him. And you just did four minutes. Ago. I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh. That's the most disrespect I've, sh- nah, I've shown. Nah, you also said he couldn't pass though. I said he's not a great passer. No, so he's not a good passer. No arm. Did I say good? I believe Semantics. So. No arm. Lamar is clearly the most disrespect he's ever seen. <laughs> I was no just said you can't trust him. I don't know if you said good or. Good All right, there you go. I'm glad I, you quoted it. I'm note. glad you quoted. It's me. actually not a quote. Uh, you should get a book, Dels. I should get a black book. I should get a black book. I really should. I tell you what, black. that will come into fruition. We'll see about that, and I, I will apologize on that statement Passing that thing? you can't trust him as a passer when you need him. Let's see. You should get a black book too. You need it. You have a lot of. A lot of takes. A lot of spicy ones. Why I gotta be black? Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how everybody stood quiet there. You didn't laugh at all. I wasn't saying nothing. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate for you guys to be the audience at like a stand-up comedy show. Well, if a joke's not funny, a joke's not funny. I wouldn't go to a stand-up comedy. I'm not that type of... You oh, never I went one? once. It was not? mad funny. That's not my type of funny. It's a great experience, though, because you go in with the belief of, all right, I'm ready to laugh. And then the the, com- the oh, comedian. Oh, just the pen with you. Like, you have a great time. I'd get pissed if it was corny though. I'm just that's just not my funny. You I know? Nah, so, some guys are really fucking funny though. Really? Like I don't, I don't know. Just a joke. Like oh, I got to make this joke to be funny. It ain't my type of. Uh, you, know. you like more just like of a natural. Yeah, we're just. You, naturally... I know what you might be feeling, but huh? I'm gonna be honest. Like, cause you're kind of saying. Under the expectation of somebody making a joke, you don't know if that's gonna be funny. Yeah. But I I'm 100 telling when you mm-hmm. go there. 
the Although you're expecting it to be funny, it's, it's not like not it is it is like, unexpectedly yeah. funny. Like okay. the jokes, because most of them it's like it's stories and, and shit. And they also I mean? incorporate you into some of the jokes. Okay, as the well. story. Yeah. I love storytelling. It's, so it's okay. Well, I would say almost ninety nine percent of it's someone saying a story or like we should all go to a comedy club. Let's go to the comedy cellar. We should go to a karaoke and get really drunk. Such a slut, man. It's always something this guy. What? Bold coming from you. I'm a slut. We should just You're bond. alcoholic. What? <laughs> I don't know. The way I saw you at Blue, Blue 42 <laughs> a couple weeks ago, bro. <laughs> I'm definitely oh not an alcoholic. It's juice, man. We should just bond as men. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with I that. Like so that. You, you laugh at that, right? Okay. The shit like that is I understand your humor. Yeah, you know, we should just bond as men. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, no, we, can, we can go. Get drunk. Yeah, I like that. Let's do it. Go on the city. Get a little uh, room. This guy's nice. Reach out to the comedy cell and be like, yo, pick a side wants to come through. Yeah. Get some. Get a little yeah. room, a uh, little. <laughs> What's going on <laughs> here, man? We're going to be some drunk, nice bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Not like that. You're a freakster. Me. Not like, yeah, I mean, not okay. like that. I'm talking okay. about just getting a little room, you know, in case we could just crash out or. <laughs> we could box espresso, maybe. <laughs> now, you may have missed it. This is a new topic we have in our football shows, highlighting a player that played well, a game we didn't talk about or we're not going to talk about on a topic list. You may have missed it. My, you may have missed it, and God should be looking out for it for me. Jeff Okuda. Fantastic. He is playing at a really good level right now, and I think the Lions, so deep into Okuda's career, after he's been hurt, to find a high-level corner like this, allowed two catches against Justin Jefferson, nine yards, 56.3 <sighs> pass rating allowed. He's played against Devontae, McLaurin, and Jettas. He's played very well. I think this is a huge, a huge boost for the Lions that – I feel like they're trending in the right direction. Jalen Petrie, Petre, out of a rookie out of Baylor, second round pick, two interceptions, twenty eight point five passer rating allowed versus the Bears. He's been a standout defensive player for Houston. And my last one I want to mention just quickly is the Bengals. I felt like the biggest adjustment they needed to do, they needed to make was marry the pass and run game. Uh, they were passing out of cover two looks running out of cover one looks. Both weren't successful because they're great at passing out of cover one looks, but teams don't sit in cover one against them when they're passing because it's obvious we're in, when they're in pass situations because they go empty. But versus the Jets in week three, 29.3% play action usage rate in the first two weeks, that was at 14%, eight pass plays from under center, nine total in the first two weeks, and 19 plays from 12 personnel, which is two tight end, two wide receiver set. They had 18 total in the first two weeks. So they're going into more heavier personnel. They are doing, they're calling more plays under center. They're calling more boot and rollout play action plays. And this is going to make their offense that much better moving forward. I think they figured it out. So just to add on to what you're saying, you you mentioned Jeff Okuda and 100% credit to him. We spoke about him pr prior to the season starting. We really were hoping the best for him, and he's really shown out so far. Mine's going to be Jamal Williams coming in once DeAndre Swift, unfortunately, went down to injury with a shoulder sprain. It's looking like he's going to miss some time. Jamal Williams has been a vulture at the goal line. He comes in 20 attempts, 82 yards, but ends up scoring two touchdowns. One of those guys I wanted to highlight because he has been consistently a solid running back option since coming into the league. And with the Lions, he's really taken that leadership role and has had success. And if he's one of those guys, especially if we're talking fantasy, and he's probably available right now. Go out and make sure you get Jamal Williams, especially while Swift is going to be out. He's going to be extremely valuable. And then Amon Ross St. Brown has an ankle injury and high ankle sprain. Not a high ankle sprain, I apologize. An ankle sprain. Good news is it doesn't look to be long term. And a report that a report just came out today that it's it's good news that that he's probably going to not miss an extended period of time, and that's extremely great to hear because Amon Ra has been a highlight to the 2022 season so far. He's lit up the box the box score. He's lit up the he's lit up the the game score as is as well. He's just been absolutely amazing, and I'm glad that he hasn't faced serious injury. Want me to go? Sure. Um, mine's not a highlight, but rather a low light. I'm a little bit worried about the Jets and Robert Sala. Um, I don't want to overreact to a team who hasn't had their quarterback for the first three weeks to a team that's played the Ravens, played the Bengals, and had a nice win against the Browns. Um, the Jets are dead last in DVOA defensively through three weeks. Um, so basically that's just looking at an average NFL play, comparing it to the Jets. They're dead last. The defense, um, while we've had some highlights, Sauce Gardner has been fantastic. Um, I am a bit worried about Salah because I look around the league. 
I look at Brian Dable and the Giants. It looks like they got it right. The Giants are competitive. They've won two games already. Sure, was it against the Titans, who are a better team than them. They won that game, and the Panthers, who aren't great, but they're competitive each game. Mike McDaniel, in a better situation, albeit has looked fantastic as a coach. And Dan Campbell, who probably in a similar situation last year on a Detroit team that wasn't fantastic, looked like the guy right away. As a Jets fan, as Jets fans... (laughs) It's hard to look at Robert Sala and be like, he's the right guy. We got it right. Now, I think the talent has improved in the second year. I think we are going to get better over time. But I'm just a little bit worried going going forward. That was a good one, but I, I had a team. I just wanted to. I was on Discord arguing with somebody. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, shout out to Muffins. Shout out to Muffins. Well, Muffins Matt, shout out to our dog. Shout out to my dog, Muffins. And I'm glad that we have this segment because I'm going to mention the Cleveland fucking Browns. And I'm going to mention the fact that you said Saquon was better than Nick Chubb. And Nick Chubb has been. Yeah, you're an idiot. Nick Chubb <laughs> has been putting this offense on his back. He's so been. Saquon. Yeah. Saquon I mean, had 14 carries and rushed yeah. for almost 100 yards. Chubb has been dog walking. Amari Cooper had Chubb a really had good what, game. Three against, touchdowns versus the Steelers? Yeah. Was it three? No, that was versus the Jets. Yeah, you're right. I know. He, he, had, a good, he, had, he had a good game against the Steelers. Amari Cooper also had a good game against the Steelers. Marcus Jacoby Brissett really has been fine for them. They're 2-1. and one. Very well put. They're, they're just fine. fine. You know, the straight line, I'm not going to say, yeah, you know, just fine. They've been really great. Aside from that loss to the Jets, I think they played really well for not Should've having been. Deshaun Watson. The defense has been solid. <laughs> they should have won, but, you know, hey, shit happens. Life happens. That's insane. Yeah, they, sh- they definitely should have won that fun game. I mean, I was over here talking about the Browns in the offseason – and you Dells were like, oh, I don't, I see. I think they're gonna start off one and four, one and five. Well, they're so, two and one now, so could it be three and zero oh if they don't. Should be three and zero. Oh. Who's let's see their upcoming opponents. It's the best way to put it. Could be. It could be three and zero. Oh. Shout out could to the be. Browns though. They've been playing well. They've been doing. The defense has been fine. Miles Garrett, he got out the hospital. Dude, so that was crazy. Yes, he got out the hospital. Yeah, so. this should be. Did you, you know, read that report? He was trying to swerve it. an animal. Swerve from hitting motorcycle. an animal. Wow. No, on on his on his car. No, I, I no. I think he was in a. I don't want to say a Porsche, but an extremely nice car. He tried to swerve it like a Porsche, then. and then it ended up doing a bunch of flips, but non life threatening injuries. Thank six, God. Six. Hopefully he's okay. He's a he's a gigantic sort of a man. He is. So uh, one word answer in or out on Robert Sala. One rude answer. I can't even say in the middle. Just where you at right now? I'm still in on him. Okay. Yeah, I'm still in on him. You didn't give up on Joe Douglas so soon. I feel like the roster is pretty good. It is. You know what I'm saying? It's a solid roster. Yeah. Let Zach change it. Yeah. That's what he was brought, drafted to do. Agreed. Let Zach change it. I personally think Joe Douglas deserves <laughs> another chance at yes. quarterback slash head coach if things I go think wrong. I think Salah, in year one, you brought him in to change the defense. It was it's one terrible. of the worst in the league. Year two, there's things to be optimistic about. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're playing the Bengals, one of the better offenses in the league. It looks like shit. It happens. It happens. Just Listen, Sauce absolutely clamped. Whenever yeah, Jamar yeah. came to the side oh, of the field, whenever T came to the side of the field, Chase I'm, I'm and Jettis have been getting clamped yeah. lately. It's, it's the vets that have been making mistakes. Yeah. The, the Jettis, Jettis, been Jettis hasn't been getting clamped. They've just kind of been He was lo- getting like fucking teamed triple in. teamed against the Lions. Against bro. the Lions, they always had two eyes on him. Yeah, like He's getting treated like Megatoid. Yeah. He's going to get this. Tron. Let's move on to Would You Rather. Now, we have two players here. It was originally Cordell Patterson, but I changed it God. to Nicholas Chubb. Ooh, Nick Chubb. Okay. Right? His name is Nicholas. I don't know if it is. Oh, I just okay. said it. But Maybe we're going to start off with CeeDee Lamb because it's Nick Chubb and CeeDee Lamb. Oh. So would you rather C.D. Lamb edition, Fuck. first name up, DeAndre Hopkins? It's going to give me a heart attack. DeAndre Hopkins. I still would take DeAndre Hopkins. D-Hop. T. Higgins. Give me Lamb. That's tough. Give me T. CD gave me a yeah, heart attack. Give me the other day. I'm I'm get, I'm going with Lamb. AJ Brown. Give me Brown. AJ. AJ. I'm going with AJ Brown. Michael Pittman. Lamb. Mm, that's a good name. Same draft class. <sighs> Are they? Pittman's a wide receiver one. So is CD. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> I don't know about that. You think he's a wide receiver one? I think Pittman was a wide receiver one because of situation, not because he's actually a wide receiver one. No, he one. is actually a wide receiver nah, one. Nah, he's him. But if so is if he is, then Lamb is. I don't know about that. Oh my God. They're they're like if I had to rank them, I know, like 13, bro. 14, it's so you know close. I mean? This is a this is a tough tough question. I'd take CD, but it goes either way. CD's a fucking dog. I'm gonna take CD. If he didn't Play have that you. drop, it'd be a lot easier to say it. His former counterpart, Amari Cooper. Ooh. Oh man, Coop is tough. People sleep on Coop. I'm going with CD Lamb. Fully healthy, Amari Cooper. 
give me Coop right now. And I'm I'm mm. retracting my statement. I I'm so sorry. I'm taking Michael Pittman. You, I think you said Pittman. No, no. I I oh, I, I took Lamb and I regret it. I'm going Pittman. I'll take CD. Don't feel great about it. <laughs> <laughs> now this should be an easy one. Jerry Judy. Lamb. I'll take CD. CD Lamb. Got to take Lamb. DK Metcalf. That's just DK. DK's tough. I'm going DK. DK. I like DK. DK for sure. DK cool. I'm going with CD Lamb. He has a cute name. What does he do better? Run routes better. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the end all be all. It's not. It's a, that's tough though. A lot of people run be- routes better than DK. Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle. I, honestly, it's not even a question. Like right. it's so far <sighs> from from close. Jalen Waddle is a dog. He's so fucking. Jalen Waddle has electro electrifying speed. I'm going with Jalen. Like Jalen Waddle has potential to be the best receiver in football. He's got to be better than Chase and Jettis. He, he can be. He cannot be. Why can't? No, Waddle. explain to me why he can't be. Well, he cannot be. Why? Better. Jettis is better at everything than him. Damn near. Let me not say everything, he's but damn faster. near everything. Waddle's faster. He will. He's like. Waddle's just faster than him. Jettis is a. He clears as a route runner. He just does Maybe. everything better, bro. And then Chase is just catching Chase. the ball too. It's not like Waddle has no drop problem whatsoever. I agree. Jettis and he has the it. speed, which in the NFL you can't teach. Jettis has the speed too, but not not Waddle speed. Yeah, correct. Jettis is just on a different level right now. It's not Waddle's ridiculous to say. Thank you. It's not ridiculous to say. I don't know. Yo, our, our three. Me. Do you remember that back in the day, the Pitts, Jamar, yeah, Waddle, early, hot, early, very <laughs> hot. Devonte Smith. It's Devonta, and. No, it's Devontae. No, it's Devonta. It's it's there's an A in there, but it is Devontae. It's I'm almost 100 percent positive it's Devonta. No, it's Devonta, bro. And I know this one. Yeah, oh, okay. I don't know a lot, but I know this not, one. Not Goddard. We yeah. know that. Yeah, no. Uh give me Lamb. Oh fuck. Listen, man, Lamb that would crazy. Lamb would look nice in his number two, too. We've seen it. <laughs> you, you moaned? I'm going Devonta. Why are you going Devonta? Better route runner, better hands. I'll take CD. I like Devonta a lot. It it is tough. I'm going with CD Lamb though. Damn, I'm high on CD. Uh, me too, bro. I, at least I'm sticking to my guns. Hey, he he would look a lot. Like I said, he just it, the, the the last game was a little. If he didn't have that drop, like he you came might clutch. Think, oh, it's easy. That one clutch. handed catch was amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he can made he can make passes. He, he just, made up for it. He be acting like a nut sometimes. Gabe he be Davis smiling and shit. What you smiling about? Huh? Gabe Davis. Lamb close. clears. Well, CD Lamb though. The Gabe Davis take has been aging like milk. It hasn't, though. <laughs> okay. How to pronounce Devontae Smith in English? I actually searched this up. Just look how it's spelled. Just look how it's spelled, She said Devontae Smith. Let me look at the NFL. Uh, you're fucked. Ah. You're fucked. You're bro, fucked. Just you're why, fucked. why can't you just say thanks, Andrew, for correcting me? No, thanks. Um, I'm just, I just want to make sure because I've seen people will say it differently yeah, multiple times. people are foolish. I can't it's believe Josh Devontae. Allen had 61 dropbacks and Gabe Davis had three catches. Or 61 attempts. Did you see the fourth one? He well, couldn't get you open. Know, if you watch the All-22. Yeah, I saw that. I was if you watch the All-22, you know that Gabriel Davis was open. Mm, sucks to suck. Josh Allen, man. What the hell? He sucks. I know. Devontae, you heard that? He's wrong. He's dumb. He's wrong. He's the announcer. They literally have their names for us. He's so, wrong. So you don't. Okay. I'll like Devonta, like Devonta has said it. He has said it's Devonta. He said it before. Yes. It's just clear as day. It's no a. a e. It's a. Devonta. I make the mistake. I always say Devonte, but it's Devonta. Devonta. When has he said it? Take a L, bro. I, when he was <laughs> coming into the draft. That's cap. It's a okay. tough ass name. <laughs> no. My name, my son, that Devonta Brown. That Hard. Tough. That is tough. That's pretty Hard. Cool. I just. I, what yeah. about Joffrey? <laughs> what do you think this game of fucking Thrones? I'm not yeah. naming Joffrey. Bro. That's a spoiler, Loki. Joffrey. Okay. Joffrey. Joffrey was a Joffrey. bastard. He was. He was an asshole. He, he actually is a bastard. He is indeed a bastard. Ironically, no he's actually a little sicko. No too. spoilers. No spoilers. All right. All right. All right. I've been, are we talking about House of Dragon? Yeah, we are. We're talking about oh. Game of Thrones. I know, but the new one's House of Dragon. But, I have, I'm not. Joffrey has nothing to do with House of Dragon. Maybe, if apparently, you watch, he does. does he? <laughs> you would know. What the fuck? Does, I don't watch House of the Dragon. Well, I'm already. I'm in the Ring of Power. So right next now. name is Nick Chubb. Now this is Would You Rather Nick Chubb edition. First name up, Dalvin Cook. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb. Right now. Nick Chubb. Derrick Henry. Nick Chubb. 
This one Fuck. breaks my heart because in 2022, you asked me this in 2021. It's not a question. I'm going with Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb's a workhorse, man. I'm going with Nick Chubb right now, too. Backpacker. I'm so sorry to the king because Derrick Henry's one of my favorite football players. Same, bro. What? It's King Henry. But damn. Why? Sorry to the king. Literally his nickname. Yeah. I can't. How call about you grow the hell up? I can't call another man king. You've never called Steph Curry king? Nope. I doubt Called him daddy. You've ne- wow. Different. Insane. I'm going Nick Chubb, but reluctantly. Oh, my God. No, we should. We should. <laughs> Alvin uh, Kamara. We should. Nick Alvin Chubb, right Chubb clears. Nick Chubb. Saquon Barkley. Chubb Sa- clears. Saquon Barkley. <laughs> Fuck, man. I knew this name was coming. I'm going so with Nick Chubb. So would you take Saquon over Derrick Henry? Yes. Okay. You take Saquon over Dalvin Cook? Yes. So Sa- Saquon's like the number two running back. He's in a the top league three two. back, yeah. Okay. The way Saquon's looked this year, I'll take Saquon. Okay. Ball but, no but Adele's. It's... It's close. It's close. It's, close. it's not right a clearing. Yeah. Please don't talk you, to me. It's back Please to back. No, leave me alone. The way that you alone. talk, it's like alone. Saquon's not even that Saquon's round. Three That's where you four. lose me. You know what I mean? I just think... Can what, you at, at least been doing the last close. two, three seasons? Can you say Okay, it's close. But That's I think it. right we're, now... We're talking right now. But I think off the production like, alone... last year and the year Nick Chubb right now is clearly the best running back in the NFL. You can't just say Clearly? Clearly. That's not clear. It is pretty clear. Is that not an overreaction? If you have 2020 vision, it's pretty clear. I mean, you're, oh, aren't you picking him reaction. based off three games? Because you can't be picking him. I understand last Nick Chubb isn't his fantasy darling, but he's actually the, he's the, he's actually real like life the football. You're best. In, in no, fantasy. he's actually number one. Number one. He's the RB one. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey, Chubb, Nick uh, Chubb. Uh, yeah, Chubb. I mean, if you take Saquon, are you not taking Christian McCaffrey? I'll take CMC. Okay, thank you. Because yeah, I just want I, you to be consistent. No, I'm definitely going to take Christian McCaffrey, but it's definitely one I have to think about. Because Chubb is that good. He deserves the respect of the thought. So you're, I don't you're think going he's getting the respect. Right now, this is, Chubb is on pace for his best year ever. Like, he is on pace for his best he's year. Dog. He shares a backfield. I know. He's been otherworldly so far. He's, still, he's a dog. He he's can do this. He's but he also shares sure. a backfield with someone that's not a bum by any means. I know, Which but says every, every other running back that we're naming, they don't share backfields. I understand. True. Chubb back. Packs. He doesn't. Also. <coughs> he doesn't backpack. Now, this is for you, Drew, because before the season, you said Javante could be at this level. So, Javante Williams or Nick Chubb? No, Nick Chubb. Right now, it's Chubb. Okay. Yeah, right clears, now, right? We, we know the answer to that. Right, right now, now right clears, now, right? Yes. Yeah, and right last now, yes. name, of course, I got to name him, Jonathan Taylor. JT. Right now. Yes. I'm going Nick Chubb. Right now. Yes. He's Nick Chubb's the best bag in the league. To right me. now. God, you guys sicken me. No, you're crazy. Right now, yes, bro. you have to, yo, you have to be consistent, bro. Right now, yes. you would take JT. Yes. Okay, Chubb. Okay, I see what type of man you are. Okay, it is close. Would you take Tua or Joe Burrow right now? <coughs> I'm consistent though. I'm taking Joe Burrow. What the fuck? Tua's been better through three games. But I don't do the little three game shit. Okay, I, so I don't. The same shit. Nick Chubb and JT. JT was Nick the Chubb best was a top. Okay, Nick Chubb Thank was you. a top five back last season. Yeah, JT was number one. Yeah, but Tua was not even a top 20 quarterback. I know, but that's but why we're took, having the But you three, took Saquon over Chubb because you think Saquon has been better right now. But he also had a, a historic rookie season. Had but that was, but, not, but, but you're, that. we're just talking about right Saquon's now. Saquon's healthy now. That was, okay, I guess. But Chubb has been better than JT. This year. That's yeah. it. Through three games, yes. Okay. Saquon's I'm, rookie year We have to take now. into account Nick Chubb shares a backfield. With Kareem Hunt. Yes, JT doesn't share a backfield. These that That's why their numbers are going to be way better than Chubb. But, but Chubb... He's also Chubb, a great offensive well, we, we talk about Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb efficiency-wise. He's, he's he the, the most second, efficient running back in the he league. He's the second he's highest been that since last year. Ever. ever? I think so. Nick so. Chubb yeah. literally has been the most efficient running back no. since last year. I have, There's no question. If we're going based off this, he's a top five running back. I don't think we're disrespecting him. Who would I put? Saquon, JT, and CMC above him? Like, yeah, he sucks. So you're saying CMC's better than Derrick Henry? Yeah. Right now, I'm taking CMC. Derrick Henry's not... At the end end of last year, Derrick Henry did not look like himself. Through three games, he has not looked like himself. But what what we just said... Hey, when, when healthy, when healthy, yeah, he you did say that. What, what Wait, so with JT, Nick, you're JT has a look like with JC, like you're still propping JT up because of the offensive line issues, but Derrick I Henry see, doesn't get that same respect. Well, Derrick Henry has been fantastic year after year after year, and then he reaches 28, which is usually the AJ Pex for running the back. Offensive line he has his worse. first injury of his career. He's come back before the injury, the last three, four games, he wasn't that efficient, and to start this season, he hasn't been that efficient. He's oh. also 28. JT, That's where running backs go down. JT also to start the season last season. McCaffrey's wasn't great. Well, and he we're finished we're, with we're talking about Derrick Henry being hurt. McCaffrey's been hurt for no, how Chubb how is, many years Chubb in a row? Tough, no, but I'm saying Derrick Henry's been healthy his whole career. 
and then 28 is literally the age almost every running back falls off a cliff. Stru- I'm just struggling. Yeah, but you're, you're struggling saying Saquon to- is better in trouble for your rookie year. That's what you're. That's you're, not what he said. No, no, what he I'm, said. I'm struggling to to really gauge why CMC is over Derrick Henry. He's a right great now, rusher, would, and, and a, he's an amazing. He's not better than back. Derrick Henry. At no one's rushing. saying he is. He's not better than Derrick Henry. At but rushing. no one's saying he is. <laughs> but Derrick Henry has not been good so far this year. Chris CMC and him has been the like McCaffrey's similar. No, better. no, McCaffrey. McCaff- McCaff- no, they've no. been similar, bro. No, this year, McCaffrey has definitely been the better rusher. They've been similar. No, they, both offenses are lackadaisical right now, and he's been the only. Bright spot. Derrick Henry hasn't the, even been a. What's the other bright spot on Tennessee? No one. Exactly. Kevin. The same as d- the Panthers. Derrick Henry the isn't Panthers, a bright spot. Baker Mayfield's been the worst quarterback in the NFL. It's Justin Fields, maybe numbers two. I'm being the honest. Second worst at like Baker Mayfield has been god awful. So this year, Derrick Henry actually has more receiving yards than CMC with he had, he, week three, five he had like less, 50 yards. five less receiving yards. He has 192 yards rushing. CMC has 243. Derrick Henry has two touchdowns. And Derrick Henry's touchdown. also on the field fucking damn near every snap, and CMC is not. He's playing like 56% of snaps. Yeah, because they know if they play him more, he's going to get hurt. Oh, That's why no, they're I saving I don't disagree. So, like, I, I just don't understand how Derrick Henry gets knocked. He gets they're, knocked bro, for, they're, they're for... neck and neck. Bro, but you... Derrick Henry's getting knocked for being hurt, but CMC is not. No, Derrick Henry is getting knocked because... Last season, I even said it, 28 is the age apex for running backs. That is when they begin to decline. We saw Derrick Henry start to decline. We saw Derrick Henry get hurt. Now to start the year, he has not been efficient. It all lines up. That's why I'm knocking him down. And I still have him as like a top six back in the league. I just don't understand. Your, your, your thinking is just inconsistent. How? That's what it is. How is that inconsistent? Because with JT, you're like the offensive line issues. They're apparent. But Derrick Henry doesn't get any... J- Leeway for having a horrible offensive line as well. Name how many how many running backs are great at twenty eight. How many running backs are great at twenty three? The list at twenty three is a fucking book long. The age at twenty eight is bro. Like Derrick two Henry lines. before he got hurt was on pace for two k because he had like he was gonna have like fucking four hundred touches. But he was efficient as fuck. No, he was the last three the last like four games he was under four carry. The he last was. four games when he got when he got back from injury. No, no, before he no, got before, hurt, before. he was averaging under four carry. But he was still on pace for 2K, bro. Because he was getting 30 carries a game. Yeah, but CMC can't do that. I understand that, but th- this isn't a who's going to be healthy, who's going to be hurt. But you have to take, take that into account when you talk about who would you rather. I'd rather the healthier guy who gives me better protection. We'll see. They're neither, like, I don't I don't. CMC's believe been hurt for like three years them. straight. And Derek, but he's also younger, bro. Derek Henry. Uh, running back is a young man's position. <laughs> Derek Henry, his last two games last season... Two point nine seven yards a carry, two point four three yards hurt. a carry. No, before no, the that injury. Was before the injury. Like he was not efficient before play? he got hurt. Kansas City and Indianapolis. Two great rushing defenses. And it's Derrick Casey's, Henry. It's Casey's never stopped him once in his career, bro. Come on. It's Derrick Henry. CMC got no playoff success talking about he would you rather over Derrick Henry. Success I'm, just, for a running I'm back. saying this. Derrick Henry literally carried the Titans in the playoffs. What are we talking about? We're not talking about Derrick Henry like he's ass. Like it that's why like I'm it. tired of this argument, to be it honest. Sounds and like that's it. why it's, I haven't well, been like, it, it, it just sounds like offensive line issues for Derrick Henry doesn't matter. But for JT it does. Injuries for Derrick Henry, it matters. For CMC it doesn't. That, is that not what it sounds like? Carry so Derrick Henry or Jonathan Taylor? JT. So what 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 the fuck it. are we having it. this argument it's just for? The, the reasoning behind it. I, I, my I'm reason, glad I didn't my, participate in this. My one. reasoning. Okay. I'm just, I, I just want you to put some clear. respect on Chubb's name. Man. I, I definitely did. A top four running. I back. definitely did. Yeah, Nick Chubb right is now. efficient as hell. He's, he's the best the, right now. Arg- he's the most efficient running back in the NFL by yeah, far. Like this, he's off to take the it, best start. Taking CMC over him is ridiculous. Over who? Chubb. Yes, uh, it's not that ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's not Nick Chubb is. I don't think. Superior. I don't think either way. Like, if you want to say Chubb over CMC, that's fine. If you want to say CMC over Chubb, that's fine. They're Nick Chubb the and Saquon got so drafted in the top, same class. He's been way better than him. Saquon's uh, Saquon's yards per carry this season is six. I was, right, Chubb's at five point five. Okay. Right now, it's, so it's he's Chubb the most efficient. He just told me he's the most Chubb. efficient. Chubb has I'm more just touchdowns. letting him know and more yards. No, no doubt. Yards is close though. It is close. And he has significantly. He has less attempts. Yeah, Chubb's. You know. The injury, the injury part of CMC's game, fine. I 100% understand because he has been banged up the last few years. But the no last way. time we saw him healthy, he was the best running back in football. One of the best running back seasons we have was, seen. How long ago was that? 2019? Bro, Jesus. It's been years. No, I was in college doubt, at that time. Without a doubt, it's been years. Without a doubt, it's been years. I was just graduating high school at that time. I'm, <laughs> high school? No, no he wasn't. 
<laughs> that was long ago. That's my point. It, it was a minute ago. It's, it's 2019. Rich, it's rich coming from the 2016 MVP guy. Yeah, guess what happened? Jesus guess Christ. what happened in 2019? Derrick Henry, King Henry beat the Baltimore Ravens. Your team. Yeah. 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 Let's stop talking shit on King Henry. He did. He the you did. You're the Lamar you have, or Derrick Henry. Let me ask you, do you have Derrick Henry's yards per carry? You were it's looking at his stats. 3.8 right now. 3.8? Okay. Yeah. Somewhere around McCaffrey's right. averaging a whole yard. McCaffrey's at five, if you round it. Yeah. So 4.9. And I still don't think it's ridiculous to say either way. Like the fact no, that you're getting not. insanely that's aggravated why, over that's this. That's why I'm like, just bro, like, like, this like, argument sucks. Like we're talking about some of the best. It's because you just don't respect one of the greatest ever touched the position, Ooh. Derrick Henry. I, you're not respecting the, top, the he's king. He's one of the best that we've ever seen. You're never gonna see a season out of CMC that you saw from Derrick Henry. Two K yards. Was, we, we put some respect on his name. Is Derrick Henry in the playoffs? Is no. Derrick Henry ever gonna do what CMC did? A thousand, a thousand. Is CMC ever gonna rush for two hundred plus yards in a playoff game? Hell no. You know that. Yeah. Hell no. Hell no. You know is that. Is Derrick Henry going to do that in 2022? Nope. All I know is that he did it once. He actually did it twice. He he had great, crazy games against the Patriots and the Ravens. I'm proud of him. Yeah, you better be. He's a good guy. You better be. I'm happy I'm for him. That's the king. Hilarious. He's, yo, if he ever gets on the show, he's going to check you on that. He's going to check me because I say CMC's. I mean, he should think he's the best running back in football. He'll check you for saying Jonathan Taylor's better. Well, when he comes on the show, I'll say you're better, King. <laughs> I'll say the same shit. <laughs> I'll say you're the King. I'll say Derek. I- I've had you as number one back my whole life. That's what I'm going to say. On to the next topic. Are we confident about the Colts after winning against the Chiefs? They beat the Chiefs 20-17. to 17. They are now 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Now Ew, start dude. this topic first. His lone playoff game, 100-yard receiving. 1-1-1. One, one, and one. I made a quick reaction video. I was in the heat of the moment after they won this game. <laughs> that video was funny. Because Mr. Joe Dells is on vacation, probably hating on Matt Ryan somewhere drinking. Sir, on my body. And the Colts won a game that nobody thought they had any business winning. A game where, oh, oh they're going to be 0-2, no doubt. Guess what they won? They pulled it out. Guess, guess why they did it? Because Matt Ryan had his 43rd game-winning drive of his career. 120 quarterback wins since 2008, the fifth most in his career. Now, it's so funny how after all the Colts' ties and the losses that they've had, we came on this show, you've liked to laugh and mock it in my face. And Matt Ryan, oh, is is Jared Goff better than Matt Ryan? You want to tweet that on Twitter? Why don't you ask if Jared Goff better than Russell Wilson? Because Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson have been playing – at similar levels this season, and Russell Wilson has a better supporting cast offensively. And Matt Ryan has been just as good. It really, the, the Jacksonville has really skewed his performance thus far. He didn't score. But week one and week three are better than any games Russell Wilson has had this year. Week one, Russ was great. Week one, Matty Ice had 250-plus yards. And one Russ had 300. No, actually, no. Matty Ice had 350-plus. He, yeah. he had 350 week one. But yet, Matt Ryan gets the wash treatment, and Joel is like, oh, I got to wait and see on a rest. He fumbled four times, and he threw an interception. I got to wait and see he on a rest. fumbles. Now, okay. Carson Wentz like. Yeah, like now, listen. Bad. Now, listen, Joel. He has, He's he ignoring had, that. He had like six fumbles heading to week three. Yeah. Now, now, listen, Joel. He's not going to. Now, listen, Joel. This, this, week, this week was a slap in the face to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a slap in the face. Yo. And my opinion on the Colts does not matter after what I say because ultimately <laughs> you, you have know, to put some respect you know on that them. It was bullshit. So you the have Bill, to put the some Bills respect. Eventually signed Rhodes. Oh, they signed. Yeah, them? they signed them. Yeah. Now listen, because <laughs> he's about to get into that. This shit doesn't mean anything. When talking about the Colts, am I confident about them after this win? <laughs> Sadly, I wasn't impressed. It, I don't know if you guys can tell by the show, the audience can tell right now. I'm not easily impressed. It's hard to impress. You got to wow me. I have to have my eyes blown wide. I, I wasn't wowed by this. The Colts offense still lacked rhythm. They struggled to move down the field. And on the Matt Ryan game-winning drive, credit to him for sure. But he got knocked down. Chris Jones talked, to, talked some shit to him. And he got penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct conduct which kept the Colts drive alive had it not been for that play the Colts are punting the Chiefs probably win now this is the problem with the Colts and it's everybody it's an everybody issue in the offseason I miss some things about them mm. 
that frankly are surprising to me. Mm. The same way how Drew didn't think the offense would be this horrible with the Broncos three weeks in, I didn't think three weeks in the Colts offensive line would be one of the worst in the NFL. Did any of us think that? Yeah. Absolutely not. I don't think it was going to be elite. Now, worst in the league is crazy. The problem with the Colts, Matt Ryan, you're right. He's too loose with the ball. He had two fumbles against the Chiefs. The run game can't get going. JT's averaging 4.7 yards per carry, which is a career low. And 4.7? Yeah, it's a career low. Holy shit. That's a, that's still great. Saying, that's, that's but this is, this is the context behind that. <laughs> no, a lot no, no. of I'm just laughing at the way yeah. that you said that career low 4.7 like as right. if that's not like Hall of Fame level it's, still it was just week one he in was the, fantastic in, in the versus the Amen. versus the Jaguars late in the game he got some rushes that definitely stat padded his yards per carry and also against the Chiefs late in the game you know he he had this big inside zone run Indianapolis is 25th 25th ranked run blocking offensive line and 27th ranked pass protecting offensive line. They are the most disappointing unit this season. They have Ryan Kelly, veteran center, Quentin Nelson, arguably best guard in the league, Braden Smith, really good right tackle, and their offensive line stinks. The wide receivers you can look at as the issue, and I know that's often what people point to, but really it's not. It's, it's the lack of creativity offensively in the offensive line communication. Now, before the season, if I asked you, do the Jaguars or the Colts have a better wide receiver core? You would have said, because of Pittman, the Colts, right? Probably. If I asked you, the Colts or the Jaguars offensive line, which one is better? I would have said, a pro- hmm. Jags Probably. line solid. Now yeah, it is, but in the off season, they made improvements. I mean, I still, it was still solid. I, I, in the off season, you would have said the Colts' offensive line would have been better. Indeed. Yeah, mm, I don't the know. Jaguars are Colts' running back. JT. You would have said the Colts. I mean, it's still, still, it's still the this Colts. is what I'm saying though. The Colts in the off season, you would have said wide receivers they're better, offensive line they're better, running back they're better, and somehow the Chiefs. Here we go. I mean, the Colts are one of the worst offenses in the league. And the Jaguars are a top five offense right now. It's the quarterbacks, bro. It's not the quarterbacks. Maker. It's the play caller, offensive creativity, and scheme. And I'll talk more about the Jaguars next segment. But ultimately, the Colts have been disappointing all around. They have not been playing to the level that their talent dictates. I didn't think everything would have gone this wrong. Frank Reich, frankly, I think after week 18 versus Jacksonville has lost his locker room and it's apparent that they're just not co- a cohesive unit. Now I know the quarterbacks gets, gets the blame and all this and stuff, but it's really more than just a Matt Ryan thing. I think Matt Ryan, if he's in a good situation can play at a really great level, which mm-hmm. what I thought was going to happen in Indy. Hey, when some lose some. But this wasn't impressive to me because the chiefs left points on the board. Sky Moore muffed the punt led to a touchdown. Amendola missed PAT, the Chiefs fake a field goal, fourth and 10, and Tommy Townsend sent it to the stands on a pass, didn't convert, and Amendola missed a 34-yard field goal. Those are 14 points left on the board. The Colts this season, 32nd ranked offense, 18th in rushing. Last year, the Colts were the second best rushing team in the NFL. Nobody thought this regression was going to happen. They'll, they'll it's, be fine. it's three weeks in. If this run game gets going, this offense will get going because that's what this offense is built on. The reason why it wasn't impressive, this is the first time in 383 games since 2000 that the Colts win while being this bad offensively, minus 10.3 EPA and negative 3.4 defensively EPA. The Colts were 0-19 in those games previously. And they're the last ranked offense in terms of offensive EPA right now. Their defense showed up. They had a plan for Travis Kelsey and bracketing him. Stephon Gilmore made some excellent plays after, I think, a down game versus Jacksonville. But the Colts, to me, there isn't much in this game that I saw and was like, I'm confident going forward. The offensive line still stinks. And that, I don't think anybody would have thought was going to happen. Maybe a regression. You know, 
maybe instead of a top 10 run blocking unit, they're 15th. I mean, we knew their but, pass pro was garbage last year. But for their run blocking to take such a decline and their rushing game as a whole to take such a t- t- decline, that was not expected. There's a reason why, Dells. Awesome. You said, JT, take him number one. There's a reason why you said that. Because you expected this rushing game to be top five in the league. That's what I'm and, it, and it has not been that. Uh, he's not. Huh. He's not the best. No. Take one. Chubb. It's, called, it's, it's a conversation. If you put JT in... In Nick Chubb situation. Oh my okay. God, it's crazy. That's what we're doing now. Um, Chubb has one of the best situations yeah. a running back could have. Well, you thought, you thought that the Colts were going to do have a little he? nice little offensive line. Yeah. Here. Well, I was never a big believer in the Colts. I thought the schedule was stupid. Like I thought the division was bad, so they would win the division, lose in the first round. I was never expecting their offense to look this bad. You sound you look like you have a lot to say. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna sit I, my feet up. I'm pr- uh, first of all, I just want to say I'm proud of you. I am proud of you because you, you like to push your agenda. I'm agendas. proud, too. I'm shocked. I'm surprised you didn't come up here and say a win's a win and this and that. Um, but I am proud of you because you're staying consistent and you're picking a damn side. And I'm happy for what you. What I do, and listen, this, this is the bottom line because Stone Cold says so. In the off season, everything is projection. We know that. In the regular season, the film comes out. And I go by what the film tells me. Some people just and this is what the film others. is telling me. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, well, you thought the Colts were gonna be great. I thought they were gonna win a bad division. I had them at like nine, ten wins. Well, you had the Ravens at first, and the Bengals clearly gonna win that. Bengals are one and two. You had the Saints making the playoffs. <laughs> um, you tried to go three and zero. Yeah, no, I don't think. Uh, I don't think I'm confident about the Colts in any way. Uh, this is a game very similar to the Ravens situation that we said that you what? had them winning the division though. The Colts, yeah. I did. Um, everyone did. Uh, but this was a you know a game that if you played a hundred times, the Chiefs probably win nine 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 of those times. But in this situation, the Colts won, and you touched on it. Having Harrison Bucker out is a huge loss. Matt Amendola is a kicker who got cut by the Jets. You know the Jets woes that kicker. He's not one of the best kickers in the NFL amongst the rest of the guys. Um, and the Chiefs had chances to put away this game. I think the biggest blunder was in the fourth quarter, less than five minutes ago. The Chiefs just sacked Matt Ryan. It's fourth and forever. Chris Jones is drawing at Matt Ryan, and it somehow gets a 15-yard personal foul penalty. That set up the game-winning drive. That's when Matt Ryan went down with 20 seconds left and, and ended up winning the game with the game-winning touchdown. Give him credit for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But he should. They should have got off the field. I was watching the game. I turned my eyes to something else. Next thing I know, the Colts still have the ball. I was very confused. Um, but that was that was the game right there. For whatever reason, Chris Jones isn't getting animated. He's not touching Matt Ryan. They're just talking back and forth. That somehow drew a 15-yard penalty. It, it was insane to me. Um, but with that being said, I think the Colts have a long way to go. I think if you're a team quarterback, my Matt Ryan, you have to have a really good offensive line because he's not mobile. He's not going to make off-platform throws. He Everything has to be very good in a structure. And this structure right now just isn't that good. Everything's going to live and die by how Jonathan Taylor is going to run this offense. He was phenomenal week one. They ended up tying. Uh, um, and weeks two and three, not so good. Week two, he only had nine carries. Um, I, I was worried about the Colts coming into the year in terms of comparing them to the rest of the AFC. I thought they were a bottom-tier playoff team. But if I'm comparing them to the AFC South, give me Jacksonville. I think they're a better team right now. I think they have a better quarterback. The weapons are looking better. The offense is looking better. I trust their coach with Doug Peterson more right now. So I don't feel confident about the Colts. If they have Harrison Bucker, they end up winning this game. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a lot of reiterating because there's no other opinion to have other than the Colts are who we thought they were, and I'm going to continue to believe this. The Broncos for me as well. <laughs> that's fun. That's fair. Um, I'm just saying. That's all right. Listen, and a, a, a specialty too. of Could Joel's have. is taking a topic that's completely unrelated and bringing it into one that we're currently having. That's fine. I mean, if, if that's what you want to say. Um, Colts still have no wide receiver outside of Michael Pittman. Colts offensive line's garbage. Defense played very well, which was a first this season, which was exciting to see, no doubt. But that's the only bright side of this game that I really saw. The offense still was lackluster. The rush rushing attack has been mediocre outside of week one, which has that's been the most shocking part, truthfully. We I, Again, reiterating. But the whole thing was that Matt Ryan had no one to throw to. And if he's not going to see Jonathan Taylor on, on a quick check down, on a, on a quick dump off, 
then he's going to continue to be sacked at the rate that he's being sacked at. The offensive line's terrible. He needs to make quick reads, which he has done in the past, and why I'm shocked that Jonathan Taylor has not been involved more in the passing game. The Colts are going to be a mediocre to sub par team for the rest of the season. I, I don't see them making the playoffs. I took Jacksonville point. last week. I did. Win, right? Yeah, I did. I did too. Yeah. No, smart. Yeah. Very smart to pivot off this team because it's not good. Dude, you're growing as a I don't man. Remember. I see it right in front of my eyes. It's a good W. Absolutely. If you're a Colts fan, you got to be feeling great because you shouldn't have won. And, lucky. You know, you're, you're lit. It's a huge and W. Luck, but, luck yeah. comes around a lot in the NFL. Um, I think us three at this table didn't think the Colts could make much noise. We just thought they would win the division. Off the strength of division being ass, which is <laughs> yeah, one of the that's, worst divisions. That's their, in that was football. their strength. The, the Colts are a team that's led by Jonathan Taylor, and they need a really good offensive line. Which we thought, to, to, we thought coming into the season, they'll be at least good enough to where JT can just backpack, do his thing. Michael Pittman Jr., Matt Ryan, but we knew this offense wasn't going to be that good. They don't have a. They have one of the worst wide receiver rooms in the NFL. So this is a lot of reiterating. The team isn't good. The schedule isn't as hard as we think it is. It's a pretty okay schedule, so they have an opportunity to fix things. They have an opportunity to still win the division because this division isn't good. Two, two weeks from now, Colts-Broncos Thursday night That's going to be a bloodbath. They got Titans, Broncos, Jags, Titans, Commanders, Patriots. Now, you know. Not much. Oh, of course, the wide receiver issue was an issue in the offseason. I did overlook it. Although I understood. No, you it. didn't. You just I, thought Paris Campbell was going to be that guy, or Alex Pierce. I guess so. And or I guess so. When Michael Pittman is there, the offense at least some of the yards moves. Campbell yeah. All I'm saying is that less than sixty on the year. Ew. I actually, dropped him in dynasty. <laughs> we have like a thirty person bench. That's how you know. Yeah. All I'm saying. I could have cut anyone. All I'm all I'm <laughs> saying is that you, none of you, I can almost for certain say thought the running game was going to be this poor. No. Fuck no. This is a big surprise. But I'm still I still have faith in Jonathan Taylor in the running game. If the running game gets going, the passing game will get going. That's maybe. all I'm going to say on that. It's not a maybe. No, it Matt Ryan's going to start slinging. The passing game is going to get going, but it's going to be a Matt middle Ryan of the pack type of the passing over. game. It's not going to be a top 10 passing attack in the league. It's going to be a middle of the pack to below average. They feed off the running game, so they I, need I that disagree. to get going. I don't disagree. Once they get that going and they can run play action stuff and all that other stuff. Well, they're they're, they're going to be the, they're gonna be the fine. 15th passing. Like, if everything goes There's right. There's a lot of good offenses. You that's, know, that's, that's what not I'm that saying. Bad. That's, that's that why, bad. like, yeah, the pass that gets going, but not a ton. That's not that bad. Mid. Mid as fuck. Let's move on mid. to the Jacksonville Jaguars. People were telling us to make a topic on them because they deserve their respect, right? They're 2-1. and one. They beat the Chargers 38-10. to 10. Why have the Jaguars been so good? What do you think, Riff? I'm sorry, I had to answer. You called me a whore. It's me. Um, <laughs> it's really me. I'll, I'll start from the top. Trevor Lawrence. The ascension to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league as of right now, three games in, he's made modest improvements in his game. Christian Kirk, proving everybody wrong that that contract Fantastic. was an overpay. It may still look like an overpay, but he's playing up to that contract. He's done his thing. And, of course, shutting out the Colts. I mean, the Chargers, I know they're banged up, but putting an ass whipping on them. I mean, this offense, this defense, the way Doug Peterson has been able to coach them, this team has surprised maybe not all of us, but this team has surprised a lot of people, you know, being – Two and one, they should be three and zero. I mean, that Washington Commander game could have went their way too if they didn't blow the lead and Carson Wentz didn't Def- go. That was the worst. Bonkers. The defense has looked all year. Yeah, I mean, all year. Games and, two and you know, games three, like you I said, even cred- tell them. Chargers a little banged up, but still, that's impressive to what they did. Sure. And then the Colts, I know their offense isn't great, but they didn't score a single point. That's impressive. No matter who you play against, shutting out a team. Trevor Lawrence and that offense is beginning to go in. That young defense has been good. I think this team, Doug Peterson leading the charge, like you said, with the Denver Broncos, they don't have a leader. The Jaguars do, and it's Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence. They've been the leaders for this group. They've been putting that team. Broncos don't have a leader? I'm talking about from the coaching aspect. You said Trevor Lawrence. that I almost had a stroke right there. Um, do you think Russell's more? He's more of a leader than Trevor Lawrence. The he way has. he changes his voice on TikTok videos, I'm not sure. That about shit was that. funny. Why did you that do that? Was that's, corny. that's corny, bro. He's a come on. Hey, yo, we going to we going to pick on some suits right here. He's a dad. Uh, Most dads are corny. Come on, like you know, he's he's. I got you. Man. That's his quarterback, though, for sure. Good job, good job. I, I think you laid it out perfectly, Riv. For um, me, sir. For me, Trevor Lawrence comes second. I think first is Doug Peterson and the coaching staff. I think they've done a phenomenal job. The Jags right now are averaging 28 points per game in the Con era, like so far in the first three games. That's the most in the 
Shot Khan era, Yuck. only allowing 13 points a game. That's the best in the Khan era through three games. Only team top five offensive and defensive DVO, DVOA, and they have outscored opponents 84 to 38 this season. Second best point differential. Now, we know Trevor Lawrence has been phenomenal this year. The defense has been phenomenal. Josh Allen, 16 pressures on the year. Devin Lloyd, second in the NFL in the pat in passes defended. Ray Sean Jacobs and Andre Sisco make up a really good safety duo. And the Jaguars are the number one rush defense right now. I mean, this is a stingy defense. They get out after it. And Doug Peterson is making this team believe that they can win games. You shut out the Colts, basically. You shut out the Colts. Actually, you did. No, yeah, they shut and then out the, the Chargers, Colts. this game, the score was kind of misleading because in the third quarter, it was a close game. But then just turnovers and great field position led to the Jaguars getting multiple touchdown after touchdown. I think the Jaguars are legit. There's a reason why after last week I said they're going to win the AFC South. The Jaguars are the best team in the AFC South. They have the best quarterback, the best offensive line. When we talk about their running back tandem and James Robinson and Travis Etienne, they're the best there. And everybody, not the Christian Kirk signing, but he's been among one of the more efficient wide receivers in the NFL, and that defense is legit. Number one rushing defense in the NFL. I don't think this is a fluke. I think their defense is really what do you good. you mean by legit, though? I think they're nah, like, they're going to be a top ten unit this season. Nah, they're very good. They're Javon Walker has been really good too. Yeah, he's Walker's been good. Like, like legit, as in they can win a playoff very game. well. Oh, the Jaguars as a team. Yeah, yeah, that's. What I, I think mean. the Jaguars are making the playoffs. I, I feel win, comfortable. Division, yeah. I feel comfortable with that for they're sure. They're not going to playoff game. Okay, they can. That, that's why. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, what type of legit we talking about? Okay, I'm here with you. I don't have really don't have much more to add on. Uh, we've talked about it. I think we talked about it a little bit last week when we did the Joe Burrow versus Trevor Lawrence debate. Like Trevor has taken that step, not even a step, but he has a legitimate head coach now, and this is probably what he what he looked like if he had him last year. Urban Meyer was just one of the worst coaches we've ever seen for one season, and you know he really set back Trevor Lawrence. So, um, you know did this he? is this is what. I don't even think he said the dude look. I don't even think he set him back. Get Doug Peterson no, next year. I mean, last year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. like he set him back. You're like, this is what we probably thought Trevor looked like last year. And the offense was terrible. But between Trevor Lawrence, how great he's looked. Christian Kirk signed James Robinson. I tweeted that has been one of the best stories this year. Coming back from the Achilles injury. ETN looked like his job in training camp. He took that job back. ETN's had some moments, but it's been James Robinson, as le at least as the lead rusher. ETN has got some work in the passing game. Evan Ingram's had some moments, too. Um, and, you know, if this defense Zay keeps Jones, it up. Zay Jones. Cute signing. If, uh, He's been good. If this defense Evan can Ingram. keep it up with what Trevor's look like, you know, there's really no reason why they can't win this division. Last week, I was saying how last week was not the Trevor Lawrence performance that allowed me to – that 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 was his signature, I'm here, I'm a franchise quarterback moment. And what did he do the very next week? Have that signed and sealed. I am a franchise quarterback. I am the future of the NFL performance. He had a better week last week, though. I disagree. I think this week he was perfect. I think that when you started the game, I would have liked to see him punch in those opportunities closer to the goal line. But he was flawless against the Chargers. He really was. There was no throws that I thought that were... Were 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 forced that were not going to be that were bad throws. I think that he was just scrambling out of the pocket, making all of his reads well, hitting throws that that he should make, but still nevertheless impressive. He was fantastic, and, and you guys all hit it perfectly. The defense has been all world, Joel. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think that this is going th this defense is going to finish as one of the best rush defense, one of the best defenses in the league. Period. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson has come in, and he's just changed the player's attitude. It couldn't have gone worse from last season. Yeah. I mean, we I think we can all agree with that, that Urban Meyer came in and was the worst head coach by far, deserved to be fired that quickly. Doug Peterson has come in and still a confidence in these guys, and we knew that. We knew that right away. We said that from day one, that there was no better coach to come in to work with Trevor Lawrence because he is just one already had experience with this, being a quarterback coach, working with Carson Wentz, winning a Super Bowl. But coming in anything would have been better than Urban Meyer, and it's just a blessing that you got Doug Peterson, one of the better guys, to come in and do that. Sadly, they have Philly this week. And that's what I am on to I next. don't know about sadly. They can beat them. Cool. This is a true test for both sides. For both sides, whether this— Now the Eagles are playing a legit defense— one of the first real legit defenses they've played. 
Let's see what you can do. Trevor Lawrence, now you're playing a legit defense. Let's see what you can do. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the Chargers are now hampered with injuries. They lost, but Justin Herbert, ribs, Keenan Allen, hamstring, Rashawn Slater, torn bicep, out for the year. Jalen Guyton out with an ACL for the year. Corey Lindsley, Joey Bosa injured, J.C. Jackson injured. I think it just sucks that this is the most talented roster the Chargers have had in a very long time, and they have just been decimated with injuries. This is supposed to be their year. This is truly a bad luck franchise. I, I think there's no other way to put it. Worse than the Jets? It might be. In terms of injury, uh, it's know. right up there. The Jets get injured know. every year, year yeah, as well. Yeah. But it's worse with the the Chargers because the Jets have, haven't had a franchise quarterback in 60-plus years. The Chargers have had franchise quarterbacks. Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers, Justin Herbert, and they have still been unable to win. And they have been unlucky. I think that makes it worse when you have a guy at quarterback and everything just continuously goes wrong. Everything goes wrong around them. I don't know if they've been continuously unlucky. I feel like when they had Phillip Rivers, they had opportunities to win. They lost. I mean, it's not more so unlucky. More so is this one. This season's unlucky. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm, but saying, I'm saying in history, I don't know if I go that With far. Phillip Rivers, he is, as a quarterback in the playoffs, he's faced the toughest schedule of defenses of any quarterback. If you like that, you get you get a W. Yeah, get it done. Get one. It's yeah. hard when you're facing that great defense. Yeah. We're going to go on to the last topic of the show, NFL Pick'em Week 4. Now... Shut Dolphins up. at Bengals Thursday night football. Who's winning this game? First things first, we all need to hold hands in prayer. For what? To Why? What? To what? Oh. Sorry. Please, Lord, oh, this is what it's for? Yeah. Please oh, can make I remove sure my that hand? His hand? That his back is, is healthy, he's okay, and he's ready to rock on Thursday so Why we can watch hell? an amazing Thursday night what? game and watch the Dolphins oh, absolutely God, kick yeah, the okay. shit. At the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm not with this. Why are you caressing my hands? So you're you picking the Dolphins. Teddy Bridgewater so you're play? picking Come the on, Dolphins. That's, I mean, you gotta stand on fam. it, fam. Are you picking the Dolphins? We ride if two is healthy. Are you picking the Dolphins, Riff? I got Cincinnati's I love home. You. I you're got home. Cincinnati. <laughs> if two is healthy, listen. Yeah. You hear that? A, a man, man. Listen, a real man. It's a short week. The Bengals are debuting I, their word. white helmets. I have the Bengals getting in. They need Cincy at home. They need to the swim. Bengals are winning this game. I am worried. They're this could, winning this, this game. Be a shootout. If Tua, yeah, two is banged up on a short week. Like I don't love it. Vikings at Saints. This is one of the tougher games to pick, but I'm I'm leaning Minnesota. I'm gonna take Minnesota. Minnesota. For me here, I'm going with the Saints. I think that teams have shown the blueprint to guard Justin Jefferson. You either have a corner who can it's man up on him, or you double <laughs> yeah. team him. You don't do it like Green Bay where you play soft zone. I think the Saints have Marshawn Lattimore. They also have the personnel to double if they want to. I think the Saints win this game. They need This is a much-needed win for them. Seahawks at Lions. I think the Lions easily get this win. Lions for sure. 40 Lions. points. The Lions have been one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL. Seahawks, one of the worst defenses. I'm going with Detroit. Shout out to Jared Goofy. Jets at Steelers. Zach Steelers. Wilson's back. Y'all are going to be shocked. I got the Steelers. I picked the Jets here. I'm picking the Jets, too. Picking the Jets. Zach Wilson, come back. He's throwing for 200-plus yards. Steelers not good. Steelers offense is ass. Zach Wilson is going to have a day. Ah, yeah. No, it's one of the worst. Ah, but not, they haven't been able to run the ball either. Yeah. Bears at Giants. Come on. Giants. G-Men. Chicago. Going wild card week. I wouldn't be surprised if Chicago wins, I'd but be, I do I'd think the Giants I'd be upset. are a better football team, and I'm picking the New York Giants in this game. I am. They're at home, too. Titans at Colts. I'll take the Colts. I have the Titans winning this one. Mm. Who you got? This is tough because I think the Titans found their groove against the Raiders. We're away then, too. But the problem with the Titans is that they haven't been able to run the ball outside of the Raiders game. The Colts have a stingy run defense. Grover Stewart has been amazing. I think the Colts won against KC, and this is a game that can truly get their momentum going. It's at home. I'm going with Indy. I'll take the Colts as well. Chargers at Texans. Chargers. Chargers. Chargers should win this game. Despite all the injuries, I am going with the Chargers, but I wouldn't be shocked if Texans the Texans beat them win. last year, right? They did beat them. Herbert Smoked is them. playing. And yeah, facts, the Chargers facts. were hampered with injuries in that game too. Browns at Falcons. Browns. I'm hoping for a, a, a good battle of the mids. Uh, I'm going Browns. I'll take Cleveland, too. Browns win this. They're tied for first. I'm going though. with a surprise pick. I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons. I don't mind it. I either. think at home. Um, and for me, the Browns, if they don't have Miles Garrett, 
that's going to be a huge hit to their pass rush. Atlanta has shown, Arthur Smith has shown creativity offensively. Of course, Clowney is nowhere near the level of of Miles Garrett, but Clowney is supposed to make his return. Yeah, I got I have Atlanta. They're creative yeah. offensively. Marcus Mariota's playing with confidence. That it's defense had a good game is okay. Yeah, I think I'm going with the Falcons in this one. And they're at home. Commanders at Cowboys. Cowboys. Hmm. I'll take the Cowboys too. I think they split. Cowboys are home. Give me Dallas. After what uh Dallas the Eagles defensive line did to Washington's offensive line, Michael, Michael Parsons yeah. is gonna feast. I'm Lawrence, going and, Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence and Marcus Lawrence feast. too. Yeah. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. Jaguars at Eagles. Eagles. Philly. Ass whipping. This was tough for me, man. I am going Eagles, but I'm pulling a Joel. I would not be surprised if the Jaguars <laughs> won. I'm going with the Jags. Number one rush defense in football. Respect. They can contain the run, and they're going to devote those players in the secondary <sighs> you know to what? stop. If to we're going to be wrong, pass. we're going to be wrong together. So you're going with the Jaguars too. Jaguars, That's baby. Good. I have the upset. Someone, Trevor Lawrence. Has to be wrong. Trevor I mean, Lawrence is going to do his thing. Oh, I know. And guess what? I'm Doug sorry. Peterson is going to get his revenge, oh, it is revenge on man. Philly. It is revenge, man. There's a lot on the I line for Jacksonville. <laughs> like, I'm sick of this shit. I know. Bills at Ravens. Yeah, I this one I'm. I had to sit and think about, but yeah, I'm right. going Bills. Yeah, I know where I'm going with this. I mean, Buffalo. Ew. It's in Buffalo? No, no it's, it's at Baltimore. It's in Baltimore. Baltimore. I apologize. What do you got? I have the Buffalo Bills. Go on, my guy. Ain't Lamar gonna be Ravens. Ain't going to be 150 degrees again, so give me Buffalo, man. Cardinals at Panthers. Cardinals. Cardinals. Panthers are fucking terrible. K1, Cardinals. baby. Hey, isn't the Panthers, like, second in division? I don't... Have they won? They won last They won against oh, the Saints. Right, right, right. Although the Panthers beat the Saints, it wasn't an inspiring win. Their offense is still terrible. Actually, the where I was sitting, I'm going there was, to like, a, a pillar blocking that game, so I didn't watch it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You didn't miss much. I'm going with the Arizona Cardinals. Was Baker playing nothing. Yet. That's no. why it wasn't that. Broncos at Raiders. Gonna be a dogfight. Give me the Broncos. The uh, Broncos country will live to ride another day. Tough. Broncos are winning. I think they'll get an ugly ass win again. I'm taking the Raiders here. I think they're desperate. I thought they were gonna split to start the season, so I got the the Raiders win at home. I have the same take. I think the Raiders are gonna come out yeah. with fire. This is a must win. No, no choke. Desperation game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Broncos pass rush takes over against that hobbled offensive this? line. Say it every game. I wouldn't. I mean, these games are close, but I think the Raiders need this. They they need this one. And this is a battle of two struggling offenses, but the Broncos have been worse offensively. They both need it. I'm going with the Raiders in this one. They, they absolutely need this game. The Patriots at Packers. 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 I'm going with the Packers, too. Mac Jones is going to be out for a couple weeks, so that means Bailey Brian Sapp Hoyer. or Brian Hoyer are starting. Brian Hoyer. I'm going with the Green Bay Packers. And that's going to do it for episode 214. Dude, there's, there's Sunday night, Monday night. What's the Sunday night one? This guy is hilarious. Chiefs. Oh, my bad. Yeah. It, yeah. Oh, okay. Chiefs at Buccaneers, Sunday night football. Ooh. I have the Bucks winning this game. I have the Chiefs. Tampa's it depends so on the health of the receivers. Yeah, so fucked yeah. up right now. Mike Honestly. Evans is going to be back. Julio, we don't know. Godwin, probably oh, not. Oh, his suspension is up, right? Mike yeah. Evans. Give me the Chiefs, though. I'll take the Chiefs. <sighs> I'll take the Chiefs, too. The Bucks offense just doesn't look cohesive right now. I think the Chiefs, although they do have their flaws, are going to come out and win this game. Last game, Rams at 49ers. We're going to be doing Straight a live ahead. stream on whatnot. Come hang out, get some, maybe win some free the, are cards. Doing, are we doing for the giveaway? pre-show or are we doing for the game itself? It's the pre-show. So okay, we're doing nice, an hour before. Nice, yeah. Nice. So we'll be watching the game together also? We could. We could, yeah. Trying to Mac? The bond is men. I would love to Mac with you. Let's do it. Give me the Rams. Uh, I'm going Rams as well. I'm actually going with the 49ers. I think their defensive line is going to be go either wrong with a lot one. to handle for the Rams. The Rams have not looked very good. Matthew Stafford is playing at 2021, I mean 2020 Jared Goff level right now. He's not very good. He, has, he hasn't been great. Um, so I got the 49ers. We, aside of Cooper Cup, man, the weapons have just been so been disappointing, good. bro. Not good at all. Uh, Cam Makers had his first good game, fumbled, unfortunately. He fumbled in the red zone again, yeah, bro. He it. stinks. Uh, I'll take the Niners. Who's home? Niners. I'll take the Niners. This is going to do it for episode 214 of the Pick Aside Podcast. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast, on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod. Thank you guys for listening or watching. We'll see you next time.